today. We're going to tell you why the Mario movie is actually a culmination of Mr. Wada's vision for Nintendo. Yes, it's a beautiful story. Uh, the Mario movie has broken pretty much every box office record possible. Yeah. And it made us think back to um, the mid 2010s when Mr. Awada yeah. was talking very actively about audience expansion. Mm -hmm. And this is really, we've, we've done some stuff along the way. This is the culmination of that vision that he had. Exactly, and it's kind of funny to think about how long it took for Mr. Awada's vision to finally come to fruition. Yeah. But it's really cool to see it come together in this way. And Mr. Awada has always talked about Nintendo as not a gaming company, but an entertainment company, and that was really instilled in us when we worked at Nintendo. So, yeah, we're gonna tell you all about that. It's gonna be a, a, a really heartwarming That's right. uh, way to look back on on that and and what it is now. Um, as usual, everything we do on this channel is made possible by our wonderful Patreon subscribers. Thank you so much for keeping this going. If you want to join our wonderful community, we are at patreon.com slash Kit and Krista. Support us so we can keep sharing our industry insights with you, so we can keep sharing our never before heard Nintendo stories with you. Yeah, it's a good time. If you've never done Patreon before, you're wondering what it's all about, good news, it's very easy to get your foot in the door. Yeah. We have, uh, you can get a free trial mm -hmm. for a week on our most popular tier, which will get you early access to this here podcast and all sorts of other cool stuff. And we also have uh, our, our entry level tier that starts at $2 a month. Yeah, yeah. So give it a shot. Very easy to get in. The entry level tier gets you access to our Patreon only Discord server, which is where we hang out with our community all week long, yeah. all day long. Ask um, us a great question for us to answer on yeah. next week's podcast. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, what else is happening? We do have our big goal of going to Japan this year. And I think now it's like, more so than ever, I really want to go because it feels like um, it's going to be really fun to show you guys all the places that we used to go to in Kyoto when we worked at Nintendo. It's like a big moment for Nintendo yeah. right now. So You have FOMO. I have a little FOMO. Yeah. I do. I well, do if you have FOMO. FOMO about us having FOMO. Support us. You can leave us uh, a super thanks on this video. That's something you can do directly in YouTube or next time we're streaming, you can yeah. leave us a super chat. And you have the beautiful uh, bar. Here is the bar. Tracking the, our progress. The thermometer progress right. that I really like. Thank you to everybody who left us uh, a super thanks last yeah. week. We really appreciate Thank that. You. And yeah, 100% of what we get from those is going, is to, going the Japan to the trip. Japan Fund. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, we can't wait to go and create all sorts of really cool, unique content for you guys. So that is going to be fun. Oh my goodness. How many Mario movie videos have we done thus far. As many, many as it takes. Or not enough. I also want to make $300 million. <laughs> $277 million. <laughs> However many million. I'm going to keep gonna, making these videos. Are you going to break some box off, box off <laughs> That's a different records? thermometer. Oh my. I got a that ways to go. Like, I got a ways to go. Uh, so what do we have on the channel? We have our vlog from the premiere. Yes. If somehow you missed that, that's a must watch video. So much fun. Uh, we have our review of yes. the movie, which has as people have pointed out, some spoilers. Some of you have Maybe. a different definition of minor spoilers well, that's than a thing. we do. That's okay. Everybody has a different definition that's of okay. spoilers. So unless you want to go the absolute vanilla no spoilers route, which that's, some people did. That's fine. Um, watch it after you watch a movie. I think a lot of you have seen the movie now. If you haven't listened to that review, hear what we thought. Maybe you agree. Maybe you disagree. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun to listen. It's fun to listen to yeah. after you've watched the movie. Then you can see what references we're like talking about. Right. Like that, right. So. Uh, we also have a fun video that might be out now on the channel, mm -hmm. which is uh, looking at the top 10 hidden um, Easter eggs. Yes. So Easter just happened, and we're talking about Easter eggs. I know. How, I was like, I'm getting confused. How serendipitous is that? Yeah. Um, these are, I mean, there's lots of Easter egg things out already from other people uh, on this movie, but these are like our favorite um, hidden Maybe gems. you've seen some videos counting these down. We have one that I guarantee is not on anybody else's oh. video. And then I point, I pointed out to you when we saw the movie. Yeah. Twice I pointed it out. You, you did. And both times you were like, huh? 
I know. I was kind of Now like, I have what? the proof, though. Okay. I yeah. have the proof. Do you really? I do. Is it in the pudding? Yeah. Uh, I have not been bootlegging <laughs> for the lawyers that are listening to this movie. I've not yeah, been you bootlegging. you just watched it too many times. But I've already watched it. You've seen the movie three, three times. times. <laughs> I'm going again this week, go so again. I'll be at three. So it's a race. Three. It's, it's a battle. <laughs> Who's going to see it the most? Who's going to see the movie more? I don't think I need to see it again for until it comes out on like... Yeah. Like... Digital, Home. Digital or right. DVD, whatever it is now. You are not authorized to show that movie on an oil rig, in a prison, <laughs> in a school cafeteria. You oh, need in to, a school cafeteria. You need to read the fine print of what they say, okay? Oh. I don't want you breaking the rules. Oh, no. Yeah. You gotta, I got to keep your nose clean, you see? You're up to no Again, good. The, 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 With the, John Law. Our, our company motto is don't get sued. So. Yeah. We don't make it. don't make me use my bail bonds on you. <laughs> don't get sued. The Japan Fund cannot go to bail bonds. <laughs> Chris is in jail. Yeah, that'll be the update. Well, send a super thanks to the, bail her out. The Japan Fund's now the bail bonds fund because Chris is in the slammer. I'm in the slammer, guys. <laughs> um, that's not really that funny, but okay. And then we also, by the time you're watching this video, we have a, a really fun video out talking about what is going on in the brains and heads of Nintendo right now yeah. after the movie has broken all of these insane records and made, you know, upwards of 300, almost $400 million yeah. opening weekend. Nintendo, their wheels are turning. You guys might have a lot of questions about what this means for the future of the company. Obviously, we have some authority to tell you about what is going on over there because we've been there for these sort of big, um, you know, transformative moments. Um, and you know, we kind of know what they're thinking. Yeah, so that, let us that, unravel that for that you. That Monday morning meeting after a big launch or a big thing Wait. can be a real doozy. That is People going, get worked up. They're probably <laughs> actually tent. Oh, they they just got out of it. We gotta do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what happens. Oh no. Yeah. There, there's gonna be some some way to spin this into a negative. At Nintendo, like that is one hundred percent what happens in that Monday morning meeting where it's like we just broke like yeah. every sales like, record. And the, the week, the week to week switch hardware numbers are down like 05 percent. Yeah, so freak you out. Just flog yourself yeah. in the corner. So now. you've actually failed. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. for actually being. You thought you were great. You're actually failure. you're actually terrible. Actually, you didn't work on this movie, so you have nothing to do with this. Get back to work. That is the other thing is like you sometimes you feel indirectly good. You're like, yeah, I was a part of this, and then you think about it, like I actually had nothing. Actually, to, do actually had nothing to do with this at all. I, I think very few people at Nintendo did. <laughs> anything on this movie honestly but anyways it does mean it does mean some significant things for the for their business right. obviously and we're going to tell you all about that things that are and are not happening exactly yeah don't get don't don't don't, don't fool yourself into thinking minions some of these aren't too hard we're coming tomorrow some no, of these kidding. aren't not happening uh we are also we're, we're not sure when this video is coming out uh we have a, a fun zelda video yeah. that we're doing we gotta switch gears a little eventually, bit eventually Eventually, we got switched. Eventually, tears. people will will shift focus back to Tears of the Kingdom. We, yeah, yeah. We can't stop thinking about the fuse um, ability technique. Yeah, in the yeah. game. So we came up with some of our own like fictional fuses using stuff in Breath of the Wild. Well, Walk. I mean, they could be, could be. They're like fuse predictions, really. Like it could. I mean, d depending on how we how much we can experiment in Tears of the Kingdom, some of these may be real. Right. The meat arrow. We have defined, we just came up with what it does. Yeah. But exactly. we got a lot of other fun ones too. But but mainly the meat arrow. Yeah. Is what we need. When's this video about. coming out? We don't know. Soon. Meat when the time though. is right, you will learn. When is a time for a yeah. meat arrow is when this video will be coming out. Right. Um, um, some other stuff. We have a Minecraft Legends preview. That game's coming out soon. If you're yeah. interested, check that out. And then Please finally. watch the worst people that are the worst at Minecraft give you a preview well, don't say of that. Minecraft Legends. Finally, the clock is ticking on your chance to get a pre order. Of the kit and crystal controller. Oh boy! The end, what is the last? How many days are in in this month? What month is it? April? How many how many One, days are in two, April? One, two, three, four. Thirty days. You've got as of the day we record this. You have twenty days to pre-order the controller yeah. at kittencrystalcontroller.com. Edition, one of a kind, really cool official. It is it is an official. Um, pro controller that has a high quality print on it, so it's yeah. not like a sticker or anything no, like no, no. that. Um, yeah, pre-order now. Yeah. Um, all right, Before we have a really fun story about Mr. Miyamoto, because again, we, we're gonna keep the, the good vibes about this movie oh going. Mr. Miyamoto. Yeah, uh, but first half, we have to shout out our sponsor, BetterHelp. Thank you for sponsoring this episode, BetterHelp. Yes. Uh, learning about yourself is a lifelong process. Yeah. Something else that I learned about myself 
working at Nintendo all these years. I, I, knew, I knew this about myself, but that really like drove it home. It what like, is it? I like to just do things by myself. That's true. And I, I struggle to ask for help. That's true. You still yeah. do that sometimes. Sometimes I, sometimes I do. You still do that. Right. Even in a two person business, yeah. sometimes like you're sick or whatever and I'm like, can I help you with something? You're like, no, I got this. Yeah. Like, no, you clearly do not. I mean, it's always like, A, you know, I think, I think I'll do the best job. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to burden somebody But I also, else. Just, sometimes it's like, oh, it's going to take me longer to, to like, like show the person somebody. how to do something. Sure. Um, I got all sorts of weird reasons for why I'm like that. Yeah, you are weird. But that was something I really had to get over. Right. And But I got over it the hard way. But that's the kind of thing that a better help therapist can, can help say, you have yeah. an epiphany about. You can really talk to somebody that is a neutral, like, third party about this. It's not involved in the situation that you're in as you are changing and growing and, and getting to know yourself better. And a better help therapist can be that person for you to have somebody to talk to about these kinds of things. Exactly. So, it's exactly. really nice. Uh, wish I had it back then. Uh, so very easy to do. Mm -hmm. You take a, a questionnaire to find out what exactly you want to focus on. You get yep. matched up with the therapist really quickly. Mm -hmm. And you can do it on video. You can do it on audio. You can do it through text only. However you want to do it. That's my favorite part is yeah. the convenience of doing it any way you feel like doing it that day. Right. So, exactly. It's really great. Uh, so, discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Kit and Krista today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Kit and Krista. Put the link right over here, and of course, it's in the description below as well. Check it out. Yeah. Um, all right, our fun Nintendo story time today is, like you said, about Mr. Miyamoto. We have have just had... So many fun interactions, and we've been seeing Mr. Miyamoto everywhere over the last couple of months. Uh, we saw Mr. Miyamoto, had a beautiful reunion with him when we went to the movie premiere. That is in our vlog. If you missed that, check it out. Um, so we're still thinking a lot about Mr. Miyamoto, which is awesome because he's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a story, this is a moment that you had with him. Mm. This was during an E3. What E3 was this? I think, I feel like this was 2015. 2015, the same E3 uh, with the Nuppets. That was 2015. Yeah, right. not a great E3, honestly, except for some of these little moments that really punctuated through a kind of a bad year. Yeah. So thankful for these moments, right? Right, right. Um, but yeah, it's interesting because we have worked with Miss, Mr. Miyamoto and a lot of these other developers for a really long time. And Usually these interactions kind of range from being, you know, you're sitting in a conference room or in a meeting room presenting something to him or sharing like a brief with him to get him ready for some sort of, you know, video or, or, or media thing. And then you kind of swing way the other way and you sometimes get to do these really like random things with them that are like kind of like things that you just dream about that you do with somebody like Mr. Miyamoto where like, yeah, you get to like go share a meal with a man or like yeah. you get to go somewhere with him. I went to Jim Henson Studios, which is kind of what preceded this incident with him where he was like, he was like a, a kid and was just like in a sense of like wonderment as he talked to like the Jim Henson people. Yeah. So like, it's cool that we have sort of this range of experiences with Mr. Miyamoto and sort of had these moments where it felt very personal. Um, and I think I'll always like treasure some of those interactions with him. Yeah, and the way these things go is like when you're planning for one of these big developer visits, like yes, there's a lot of very like, what is the schedule? What time does your flight arrive? When are the <laughs> yeah. appointments stuff? But there's other stuff where like you do kind of get a glimpse into their personality. And one of those things is like, well, what, what are we doing for meals? Yeah, everyone's gotta eat. Right. You know, I'm a big food person. <laughs> so, so it's like, well, you know, what time do they like to eat? What do they like to eat? Do they care? Do they yeah. just wanna Wrap it up and get back to the hotel. Right. Uh, but one thing we learned about Mr. Miyamoto, and he will, he'll tell you, he loves hamburgers. Yeah, there's been many instances where he has shared his love for hamburgers with us, with even people publicly. I think there was a Super Mario Run video he did. Yeah. Where he wanted to play the game with one hand, which we actually did on a right. Nintendo Minute. And he ate a hamburger with the other hand, which I was like, dang, that is so hardcore. Um, he didn't even make a mess. Like, I, I would make it, it would be all over me. But he was just, he was a pro because he eats so many hamburgers. Um, and uh, he loved, he loved an American hamburger. Yeah. He, his like must do every time he would come to LA for anything, and mostly it was around E3, was he has to get in and out. Yeah. 
Oh, we're from California, so I gotta tell you, In N Out is my favorite hamburger as well. There is a big debate. I know about In N Out versus um, what's the other place? Five Guys, no. Shake Shack, Shake Shack, right? Yes. Well, back then, Shake Shack was very East Coast only. Right. Now there's like only, Shake Shack here, but I still don't like it. Only you know, recently they have uh, branched out to the West Coast. Yeah, but we're, I'm like an in and out purist. We're right? not talking about the in and out in and out fries. I know those are the most controversial things of all. We're the talking burger, about the burgers. though. Burgers, You're good. a you're in and out purist, I like it. too, right? Yeah. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't get the sauce. So I no, guess I'm not. No animal sauce for you. Well, just the so that sauce is mayonnaise. Oh, yeah. So I don't it's Thousand it. Island, so you can't have that. Which is mayonnaise. There's a secret menu that we also order. Well, everybody knows it's not very secret anymore. Well, I have a very special. Anyhow, anyway, <laughs> um, but don't come at us if you are not In and Out fans. I'm just, that was Mr. My point. Miyamoto's canceled for loving In and Out. Oh no, never <laughs> protect him at all costs. Um, protect him and his In and Out. But uh, he, yeah, like he will make it a point. No matter how busy his schedule is, he would be like, "I need to go get this burger." Um, so we need to like carve out time in the schedule to go get the burger. Right. So you went with him. Was this on the same trip to go to the Henson Studios yeah. to see the Nuppets? You yeah. went to In and Out. Right. Tell us about this. Yeah, exactly. So we like escaped the bowels of the LACC, which mm. was kind of nice. Um, good place to get out, get away from. Kind of get out of that yeah. war room. You know, you know, like claustrophobic big in there but there was a very like kind of like a strike team i would say it was not very many people um we took mr miyamoto to visit jim henson studios because that was the year of those nut bids. and yeah it was really cool we did like a whole tour of that studio we sat down and made some videos for that you're gonna talk about that in a separate story separate time. To story right. time yeah that that was really fun um he definitely had just this like his eyes were like there was like heart heart emoji eyes um through that trip so he was in a great mood you know, afterwards, and we were like, let's not go back yet. No one wants to go back there. No one wants to get back yeah. to our beautiful day in LA. You didn't want to get back either? Nobody did. Nah. We did like four other things. You wanted to we play hooky. We wanted to play hooky. So we were all like, and again, it was a really small, you know who else was, was on that? Hollywood's on? Hollywood's on. I knew it. Yeah. Hollywood's on. And the credits for the Mario He's in the movie. credits, yeah. I just talked to Hollywood's on. He's, he's, he's doing great. great. He wants to see us when we come to Japan. Wonderful. Dinners are dinners are being arranged hey. with Hollywood song. Anyways, um, so yeah. So we were like, you know where we can go for lunch? Um, let's go to In N Out. Like we found one that was pretty close to where yeah. we were in LA. Um, like perfect. Like that will be like semi quick ish and like we can escape and eat it and no one will know that we've like left for like hours. Yeah. Um so we're like perfect. So we go to In N Out. It's pretty, it's actually pretty quiet. So we're like, oh, good. No one will like bug him. What time was this? It's probably around like 11.45 ish. When so we like sat right down. before the lunch right rush. Right before the lunch rush. Okay. So we had sat, we got all our burgers. Um, I'm going to put pictures here so you can see how happy he looked. Um, we're all hanging out. We're having a great time. There's like 45 hamburgers on the table that every, people have ordered. Well, you what know? is his order? He gets the double double. Okay. Just kind yeah. of as is. As is. All right. Yeah. 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 Um, One? That, I think he had two that day. Yeah. Those are not big. I mean, if Those you're, hamburgers aren't you're coming huge. to America, you got to... Those hamburgers aren't big. You got to go for it. Yeah, I mean, you're, yeah. you're hungry. You're okay. Just, you've been doing stuff. You've been walking around. Drink, fries? Uh, definitely fries. Yeah. Um, just plain, though. Right. With ketchup. Not yeah. like ketchup on the side. Yeah. Drink, cherry Coke, I believe. Whoa. Okay. Either cherry Coke or root beer. I can't remember now. <sighs> you're not a soda person, so... Well, you're... you're I want to get into the details here. Oh, now okay. it's, it's all falling apart for you. No, okay. it's not. Okay. It's not. I'm telling you. Um, so we sit down. There's, again, small group of us. We're just, you know, trying to hang out. So far, so good. Usually, he goes somewhere. People, like, kind of mob him. Right, a bit. right. Maybe people recognize him. So he's doing really good. And um, he, we're, we're just joking around. Everyone's having a great time eating the hamburgers. And then we hear this, like, school bell ring. So apparently, there's a high school Right next to that oh. in and out school, they oh, no. get out for lunch, yeah. and kids start rushing. These high school kids start rushing into this in mm. and out. One kid turns around and was like, "Is that Shigeru Miyamoto?" Uh. And we're like, "Uh oh." <laughs> 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 we we had like enjoyed a good you know thirty minutes of quiet time in a public space, which was very rare for him. And and these kids were so sweet. They were not. Like the terrible autograph hunters mm. that I wanted to punch out um, at the movie premiere. They were like really polite, really yeah. sweet. But yeah, they, they were pulling their notebooks like out of their backpacks to get his autograph. Oh, really? And it was so cute. I mean, he was so nice. Wow. Of course, he 
put down the burger and <laughs> went and signed pic- signed things for them and took pictures. But so many, ki- so many like these high school kids were just like, "We love you!" Oh yeah. my gosh! And then it started to get a little overwhelming. There was like a lot of people, so we we left. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I think he was kind of like on. It's like that similar moment where you can just tell, you know, we kind of saw this at the premiere as well, where he's just like on cloud nine, he's feeling good, yeah. you know, he, he's had a good day, he went to this place, you know, that he was really excited about going to, like Jim Henson, to see that um, was something that he wanted to do, and um, he genuinely had like fun that day, and it was like, he deserves to have like a little bit of fun when you're working like day and night right, at E3, right. so it was really nice. I think afterwards, we also went to... Um, Hollywood Sun is famous for like finding the most bespoke like shishi coffee yeah, shops yeah. ever anywhere. Right. And of course, he like found one. We went and like got like fancy coffee afterwards. And I think Mr. Miyamoto even bought some coffee to take. Back, oh wow! Um, some like nice. beans yeah. or whatever. So it was like fun. And then we had to go back to yeah. the bowels of the LACC. We did he like, get to Dang. finish his food? He did. He did. We, we were done. We were like okay. we were just hanging out. We All were right. like eating fries and just yeah, like, chatting yeah. and stuff. Did, he he is very gracious with. Like people who want an autograph, yeah. Like there are some people who be like, no, I don't do that, or no, yeah, I'm busy. Like I'm busy, he'll definitely yeah. do it, which is why it can be dicey in those situations where people are hounding him because he's just like, well, those people are mean. I gotta scary. do it. No, but I feel like he, I feel like he would just do it I know, if there was would. not that the people like saying like we gotta go. No, I feel so bad. And that it's that it's not like the, him. yeah, it's just him being genuinely I hate, I hate, I hate wa- those wanting to do it. I'm mad at them still. Um, so, yeah. yeah. But those high school students were not like that at all. They were super polite. I mean, he they they just were like in awe of him and just like is that moment where you know when you used to read like that stuff in People magazine where it's like celebrities, they're just like us. Yeah. They do laundry and eat hamburgers and like whatever. It was like that moment for those high school kids. They were like, Wow, like this like legend is just like wow. sitting in a place where we have lunch. Right. You know? Um, during our lunch break from school, just like eating a hamburger yeah. just like us. Like, this is incredible. You That's know? cool that, that so, cool. so many people recognized him. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a chance yeah. nobody, I mean, different different people like different things. There's a chance none of those yeah. kids knew about him. I think him he liked there. it because they were like younger people yeah. too. So he was like, oh, that's cool. Right. You know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm cool like yeah. taking some photos with these yeah. people. Yeah. Um, the, the other funny thing that happened after that, that sort of in and out trip, I think they got wind of like, we can't we can't let him out uh, <laughs> anymore. So instead of like letting us go to In and Out for next E threes, they just brought the in, they had an In and Out food truck. Yeah. Which actually this was pretty cool. They had an In and Out food truck that would come um, sort of to the back of right. the LACC where right. we would set up our booth and stuff, and you can get your hamburger there. But I think it's because they were like, wait a second, why did he leave for like six hours that day? <laughs> Where'd he go? Yeah. We can't, can't let that happen again. We'll just bring the hamburgers to him so he can stay in the LA. Season. Well, now I'm getting hungry. Thanks for nothing. I don't want to. Two-hour podcast to go here before I can eat really something. Really bad. Yeah, uh, whenever I whenever I see that in and out, or whenever I have it in and out, I, I always think about him. Yeah, I'll, I'll always. And then yeah. you you had like tweets that were going out of like here he is in and out. I think I'm sure our legal team would have a conniption fit of like we're not we're not sponsoring in and out, we're not know. condoning Hashtag in and out. Ad, you just revealed his location. I know, yeah. I know. We were we were like this is like simpler time, 2015, simpler <laughs> time, simpler time. Just we tweet can, it. We could just do whatever. <laughs> like I was like. Taking photos, he was like <laughs> hamming. I, these photos are he was like posing with yeah. his hamburger. It was hilarious. Um, yeah. Anyways, it was it was great. And that those are the moments, you know, with these developers that you think like, I can't believe I'm sitting at an In and Out eating hamburgers and just shooting the breeze. With yeah, that's where you really get to know them and yeah, form a relationship. It's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it's again, it, it just makes it feel really nice that. We got to see him again, and and got and got to just tell him, you know, congratulations on such a huge accomplishment um, with the movie, and it feels nice to to know that like those relationships meant something, you know. Yeah. So Fun- we love you, Mr. Miyamoto. You're the best. Funnily, I also took uh, a developer to in and, in and out. It was Yuji Hori. Oh, he likes hamburgers I, too. That's true. <laughs> I mean, you can get good hamburgers in Japan, but I think there's Moss something River? about the mystique of you know America and hamburgers. Yeah. Um, nobody recognized him there. Oh, I don't know, Yuji Hori is not a household name or face yet. Yeah, yeah. Still time. Still time. For our guy. Still time. <laughs> Still Get time. Get out there with a slime, Yuji Dragon, Hori. Dragon Quest, what are we on, 12, 13? Whatever, whichever one's <laughs> no, next. Way yeah. more than that. Dragon Quest. Isn't it? Aren't we up to like 16? You're thinking of Final Fantasy. No, I'm thinking of Dragon Quest. Mm, let's move on right. before you step in it. All uh, right, we are on to our Never a Minute segment. We have passed the first 
three months of the year. JFM. JFM, as they say. Thought was um, We thought it would be nice to just look in, kind of do a, a quarter year look in at our game of the year. That's a year How long thing. How is it shaping thing. up? Yeah. How is it shaping up? Are there any games that have really stood out to yes. us? Yeah. Uh, any big gaps mm -hmm. that we have? We have been keeping the Rogers Base official. TM official <laughs> game <laughs> tracker. Bar. Yeah. Uh, which is a great thing to do. This I, is the I, first year that I've done this yeah. for myself. And I'm so glad that we're doing sort of a, a check-in because sometimes I get to the end of the year and I'm like, what in the world happened? Exactly. I literally cannot remember what I had for breakfast today. Yeah. So I don't know. Right. So now we have a great, we're good at record keeping now. I yeah. Feel. Recommend it if you, if you really are serious about yeah. keeping track of everything that you, you should played. Because otherwise yeah. you will forget something. I have notes too. So it's like, I can go back to those notes and be like, oh yeah, that's how I felt right. when I beat that game. Or right. like, that's right. how right. I felt about that game. So it's great. So obviously too early to say anything is, you know, definitively, mm -hmm. oh, this is game of the year or this is winning this category. Yeah. But what and you squeaked in, you beat Resident Evil 4 remake yeah. over the weekend. So you can squeak that one well, in. Well, that's a Q2. When did that come out? Did that come out in March? March. Yeah, we'll talk about that too. Um, so yeah, what, what are your big impressions of the first three months of the year now that you're looking back? You know, I always have this like perception that the first few months of the year will be slow yeah. for some reason. Like I just feel like, oh, you know, after the big holiday sort of run, everyone's gonna get a little break the first couple months. But I'm always like, that's not true actually at all. Yeah. There's tons of games now that come out in that first three months three, four months of the year, and yeah. I'm like, there's oh. al There's always... There's always some dark horse. There's always games never... that get delayed out of the holiday. Yeah. And then there's also always games that people try and put at the end of the fiscal year. Right, right. And I just always get like, I don't know why, I should probably stop being surprised by this, but I'm always surprised like, oh yeah, this game is coming out. This first half of the year, I will say that there's a lot of games that were not on my radar, mm. or games that I just had a really bad, like... Um, I, I was like, this is this game's gonna be bad, <laughs> and I'm not gonna play it. That you didn't play. Um, that I thought I wouldn't play, but then was like convinced other were otherwise. Oh, oh I'm interested so about that. So it's kind of interesting. It's like I had gone into 2023 thinking, and eh, not that many stuff coming out in the beginning of the year. I'll probably just kind of like take it easy until Tears of the Kingdom, do a little here and there or whatever. Well, the first part of the year was really slow. I remember in January we we're like, hey, there's nothing happening. Yeah, until Fire Emblem came out, I think. Fire Emblem. We, well, we, we played like Fire Emblem out yeah. of boredom because we were like, there is nothing right. to play. Right. We're gonna, we are gonna weren't going to play Fire Emblem, now we're going to play Yeah, it. so it was kind of like the first couple weeks were like mop up for whatever you whatever were playing, you over, were the, playing over, the over the break, the break. from yeah. the big holiday games. Exactly. Yeah. But then, it like, then, so Like a Dragon would be the first one that I was like, I did not know this game was coming out yeah. at all. And then I played it, beat it, and was like, this game is awesome. Like, Game of the Year contender. Right. Which was kind of cool. Yeah. Like, just to have that, like, unexpected twist mm -hmm. from, like, I love um, the the Yakuza franchise, obviously, and I just not have this game on my radar. So mm -hmm. now I'm like, wow, that's really, that's really cool, you know, like, that we had that fun surprise. Um, the other one for me that I think was... Just like, I took an L on this for sure because I just did really thought this game was going to be terrible, which now is like one of my favorite games that I've played this year is Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah. I beat that game as well. Like I just, I went into it, like when I saw the game being announced all through what they, what they showed for that game, I was like, this game is going to be terrible. Six out of 10, like really bad. Um, boy, was I wrong about that. So, um... I'm so glad I was wrong because this game turned out to be just a, such a cool experience for a fan of that universe, and yeah, I loved it. Like, I this is this is my current game of the year. So something wow. needs to knock it off. To I'm sure Tears of the Kingdom, yeah. Game, but um, something needs to knock that game out off the number one seat right now because I was like shocked by yeah. how much yeah. I loved it. I would say for me, the three most memorable games have all been remakes. So you oh, got wow. Like a Dragon is a remake, remember? True. It never came out yeah. here. So it's it's remakes that don't feel like remakes sort of at new. all, which is kind of incredible. Um, Metroid Prime, which I, I didn't finish that, honestly. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. And then Metroid Resident Prime. Evil 4. Those are all remakes. Yeah. Um, wow. So what, that, a, what a year. That is such an interesting trend. And we've been talking about this in, in previous weeks of 
how does a remake factor into a game of the year conversation? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm over that. I think it absolutely can stand Deserves it. Yeah. on its own. Yeah. Um, especially when it's doing new things, having a very yeah. light touch in, and the game was so good to begin with and you're, mm -hmm. and you're delivering it to an entirely new audience. So that's really the trend of these first couple of months for yeah. me. Oh, interesting. Um, I did play, you know, you know, there's stuff like um, Blanc, which we played. I think that's a great looking game. That's a really unique game. Mm -hmm. um, Hi-Fi Rush. That was a game that didn't really click with me, but I, try that game. but I think has a lot of merits. I think it looks great. I have a feeling that that will be on a lot of other people's game yeah. of the year lists. I think so. Um, so that was a nice surprise. Um, I've also been tracking like some of the, the demos that I've played because yeah. it's like, well, maybe I'll go back and I'll play the full game, but if not, I got kind of a feel for it. So like, for example, I'm probably never gonna play Octopath Traveler too. No, but I played but I played enough to know like, okay, this belongs this is... in the best music category. Yeah. Easy. Okay. Yeah. That, so you, you get a taste of it. Right. At least. Yeah. Right, right. For versus just like, well, maybe it was cool, maybe it wasn't. It's like this is a very easy way for me to just get a taste yeah. of these games. Do you feel yeah. like, and I feel like this a little bit, um, besides Blanc um and storyteller. I haven't played a lot of indie games this first yeah. quarter of the year. <clears throat> and usually I'm like very into sort of like dual wielding the games. Like I'll I'll have like a big meaty right. game like Resident Evil 4 or or Hogwarts Legacy or whatever that I'm playing and then on the side I'm playing like Oh you're like bedtime my game. My little bedtime yeah. game. And I haven't had as as many options, which was yeah. I, I was when I was looking back, um that was a little disappointing. Like I was like, oh, yeah. Wh where are the <laughs> where are the bedtime games? Where are the cozy games? That's a good point. Yeah, I think you're right. I think there have not been the just very steady rush of of indie games. Yeah. Would you say but, High Five Rush is an indie game? No. no, no. Right. Okay. No. Um, yeah, I feel like we're due for yeah. for some big there hasn't been like drop a, of those or, yeah. or like an indie direct or, or, or just something like an indie game that's broken out into like mainstream conversation. Yeah. Like, like you sometimes there's like a Hades that well, that, yeah. that one is yeah. a little bit more than just some indie game. Silk Song. Oh boy! Still time for Silk still, Song this year. Still, still, still time. <laughs> Shadow Drop. Shadow Drop. Where is that? Tomorrow. Um, is there anything in Q1 that you feel like you really just missed? Of like, oh gosh, when, when we look back at the story of 2023, I have this big hole with this game or this thing. I think it's going to be Bayonetta Origins for me. Because I think, oh. I think I mean, that... that game kind of has come and gone. And Well, the thing with that game is, here's, here's my problem with it, or my, my, my issue, is that Bayonetta has never been a franchise that's really connected with me in yeah. any sort of significant way. Like, I know there's such a core, passionate fan base for this game but I just as much as I want to love it I can't get yeah. on board Bayonetta Origins from what I've seen and from what you've told me because I know you play the demo is I think my kind of game like that kind I think of it like is too. I think, story I think you'd like bookie it. kind right. of like slower pace like that is like my favorite kind of genre almost so I feel like I've missed the boat on that a little bit maybe I can get a chunk of time where I can play it. I don't know when. I'm looking at this list of Q2 games you have in our document, and I'm like getting Well, just really play the nervous. demo. I know, but I don't have time right now. Demo's like so two hours Resident long. Resident Evil. I just need, I don't have time. Anyways, but I think that might be one that I may regret later if I don't get to All it. All right. Um, How about you? I feel pretty you feel caught good? up. Again, playing those demos helps. Because yeah. 80 hours of Octopath Traveler 2 <laughs> is a lot to ask. It's true. Uh, I, I, I mean, that's a game that I would love to play if I had the time. If you had 80 hours, But I just yeah. don't, and, it, and, and it, yeah. it would mean that I'm missing out on a lot of other games that right, I would want to play. So it's hard. can't do it, yeah. I did just get, and I, I don't know if this will make a huge difference or not, but I did just get codes for this last round of Playdate games that that's they put out. That's true, too. I've been They really did do a big update on the Playdate where they added a game store and they have like mm -hmm. a whole new wave of games that they did. Yeah. I need to get back um, to with that. Those were pretty hit or miss with me, those games. Yeah. But the ones that hit, like I did really like and I do still think about those. Yeah. So that is a really unique sort of game that you're not going to get anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Um, and now I have the Steam Deck, so I, I do have one game on the Steam Deck. I'm, I'm going to talk about it. You in got the, a lot of options in the what we're playing, that. and that's what I've been doing still. Is like, what are the games that are not on on Switch or any other platform? Yeah. That I that I want that are on the Steam Deck. So that's that's an ongoing process mm -hmm. for sure. 
Yeah, yeah. And then I, I just feel like moving into some of the next quarter games that we're what? might be excited about. The list is well, getting Q2 is pretty a, long Q2 and is kind of be a, scary. It's a bloodbath. I did not Something realize. Needs to go. I, I just did this. I was like, you know, there's, I think there's a bunch of games that I want to play in Q2, yeah. and I wrote them down. So let me just go through just what go I wrote down. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are, and these are mildly in chronological order. Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster, Advance Wars 1 Plus 2, Minecraft Legends, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Tears of the Kingdom, Lego 2K Drive, Street Fighter 6, Diablo 4, and Final Fantasy 16. There's so many, like, huge games. Those like, games why are, are there three games that are going to take you, like, hundreds in, of hours? In the next, like, two and a half months, those are all going to be out. Uh-oh. <laughs> and I want to play all of those. You're going to have to Sophie's choice. What, what am I not... What am I... What am I not going to play? I'm not going to play oh, Jedi Survivor. I think Lego 2K Drive. I'm not going to play Lego 2K Drive. I'm going to... I probably... Oh, I really want to get good at Street Fighters. So Advance Wars, like, I think I can just play like the first couple bit, yeah. and be like, okay, okay I, get the, I, get the I, I remember this, I like this, I'll we'll come just, back like, to it. stream it and that's it. And I'll come back to it later. <laughs> Final yeah. Fantasy Pixel Remaster, I'm yes. doing day one. I am playing Final Absolutely. Fantasy. I'm doing a full playthrough of Final Fantasy IV before Tears of the Kingdom. Star Wars, I think I can wait until later. Yeah, I'm not going to play that one. Eh. Um, like Minecraft Legends, I want to play that with you. I want to yeah. play the co-op mode with yeah. you. Because that will be really fun. Lego 2K, I like it. That might go on sale. I'll, I'll wait for that to go on sale, honestly. Uh, oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> I'll that wait for that. Street, Street Fighter, Fighter 6, 6, yes, obviously. I, I do. I, but that feels to me like a game I could play on the side with something that's else. That's true. Like, like, oh, I'm doing a couple matches. you can just keep going back to it like, throughout the year. You don't have to like play it all at once kind of thing. Right. Diablo 4 and 5. Ugh, those you are... have to play Diablo with me. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, man. Those, those, two, those are the two really hard ones. I was hoping that one of them would get delayed. They're totally not. That was one of our predictions. I know. We were that's that's wrong the rare that. prediction that we didn't get right. But Final Fantasy 16, of course. Of course. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's my answer. Is I, don't, I don't know. And then it's like, am I going to be done with Tears of the Kingdom by then? No. You that's going to be, be like a, a, gonna, a month and you're change. You're still going to be fusing meat arrows for like four or five months. Stinks. You're going to fuse so many arrows. It's going to be crazy. Well, the only thing I can hope and wish for is that the third quarter is lighter and I can just kind of just carry, carry, carry a lot of these games yeah. over because over. I can't, I can't do this. I just can't. <laughs> I can't oh, darn. What a first world problem. It I is. have too many games to play. Oh, no. Well, I really do remember, like, there's, I, I'm sure somebody has quantified this, but... I do remember a time when there were not this many good games no, coming out all at the same time. That's true. And like, I, I can think back a long time to like when I had the Nintendo 64 and it was like, mm. oh, a game came out. Now I'm waiting six months for yeah, another you one. You have to really like milk yeah. eek it's every like, I am squeezing month. every you ounce of fun. You played Mario 64 yeah. like 300 times. That's what I did. Times. That's yeah, what I, I did. Know, I did that too. Uh, but not with Mario 64. Especially but, yeah, in this generation, it. it just feels like You're just, it's the nonstop. Are... Right, right. It's crazy, but also it, it's like, it is like a kind of like a conundrum. It's like, are we leaving enough room for people to like truly enjoy and and have a moment with each of these games? That's like, why I thought, you know, the Diablo 4 and Final Fantasy, some, somebody would blink and just be like, yeah, these, these are like playing like chicken these with might each other. Be, <laughs> these might be drawing from similar audiences. Yeah, they're, you know, they're both like RPGs. Power and forward. we might be losing players to that. I know. So let's pick a better time. Yeah. But no. It's it's rough because like you kind of, it would be great if like we can all just play Tears of the Kingdom all together and then we can all have great, you know, hey, did you know conversations about it? Like I do kind of miss that a little bit. That's why I, it's fun when everyone like jumps on one game, like when we had like the Elden Ring phenomenon or like the Breath of the Wild phenomenon. Right. So it, it's harder and harder to have that kind of moment though so i do wonder what that means and and how that kind of goes goes with your enjoyment and, and the longevity of, of these games like a lot of times i think people just it's like a flash in the pan you know you play it and then you're like done you're off to the next thing yeah so. uh well fortunately in q1 we did get a, a strong bodhi contender in like a dragon ishin oh. so you got to keep track of that too. that that's on the top knock that off that's, the list that's the final someone. word on the first quarter that's true <laughs> Let's move on to the games we're playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got some different 
Oh, I, I've wrapped up Final, or excuse me, Resident Evil Four last I, night. I'm doing pretty good too. And I'm, you, I'm you've been powering through. What chapter are you on? I believe I'm on chapter eleven. Okay, and there are fifteen. And then I what, or was lost. it sixteen? Sixteen. I kept telling you. I know every day I kept you're, giving like, you bad information. you're like. Chapter 12 is the last chapter. And then there was like the next day. Chapter 15 is the last chapter. And then the next day. Chapter 16 yeah, So I think left. it's 16 I'm chapters. I'm like, can you please stop telling me wrong things? <laughs> Fake news. Those, uh, 13, 14, and 15 long. are pretty big, long chapters. Okay. Some of them, so or most of them so far have felt very like short yeah. to me. Yeah, like, they're, they're very fast. They tend to be like an hour. Yeah. Or, or less. Or less. It's like, oh, right. this chapter's over. So it really, moves, it really okay. moves. The Great. pacing is good. The one-liners in this game. I really miss the early 2000s one-liners. Maybe this would be a great game for us to do uh, voice acting for. We I could, totally I could be Leon should. and you could be Ashley. I would I, love I to be, be Ashley yeah. to your Leon. We yeah. should do that. Um, yeah, some of the one-liners, though. It's like such like a, like, you know those action movies we right. used to watch back in those days? Like, I kind of miss it. I know, like, it's hard to do that now. You don't want to get, like, canceled or whatever. It's like, that's not a world we can live in now. <laughs> you mean canceled for saying hasta la vista? Like, I don't what? know. It was like, oh, are what? you, are you, like, it's like Duke Nukem or appropriating, something? Appropriating, like, the different. I don't know. There's people are sensitive, okay? I don't. I'm not the one, okay? I don't know. But it's like, he has such great, it's like, it's amazing. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm laughing, like, the whole time. It's great. <laughs> what I realized in the second half of this game is that I absolutely did not, not remember, remember anything. anything that happened in the second half of this game. I think my memory starts to really fall apart after the lake part. That part, I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, the thing in the lake. I remember that. I and remember like, there was a pretty big change of scenery once you get out of the castle. And it's like you're in yeah. kind of like a more like industrial lab yes, type yes, thing. Yes, yes, The castle was a little familiar. Right. Like, but oh, there were a lot of moments where I would do something in the remake and I would say, well, that's not what happened at all. And then you like, They completely back. change it. And I went back and looked at a walkthrough of the GameCube. Exactly no, it, it is pretty much exactly yeah, the same. So, totally whoa, right. that's... Wild. <laughs> like, I don't remember this. Well, it's been like 20 it's years. It's been a long time, to like, be What fair. can you remember from 20 yeah. And this is not a game ago. that I was like replaying year, right. yearly. Right, yeah, so exactly. I was, I was really relying on that 20-year-old memory. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I do remember the first half of that game very well. Though. Yeah, that, that first village That's very part iconic. Yeah. with like the whole, the Blake thing. Right. And then that, that, yeah, I remember that pretty clearly as well. Yeah. So none of that really like surprised me. But Yeah, yeah. Um, this game is pretty... Pretty darn close to perfect, I would say. Yeah. In a, and again, it's in a lot of ways that I think are very hard to put your finger on. And I think speaks to how they've had a challenge to recapture the magic of this game. Yeah. Of the, it's like, do you know how you did this? Did yeah, this happen? it is really hard. Because it's like, it's a game that appeals to so many different people, I think, is one of the, way, one of the really unique and fun things about it. Is like, you and I are noted chickens. Like, we are scared of everything. <sighs> Especially me. Um, and we don't typically like play these kinds of games, no. but I'm having the time of my life. Yeah. Like it's scary, but in like the kind of a fun way. And so it really like captures like that survivor horror adventure vibe. Like it balances that like perfectly. I think yeah. it's pretty hard to to do that mm -hmm. with um, with other with the other Resident Evil games. I don't think they've really been able to nail yeah. that. Yeah. It's just a combination of all of the factors put together. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's like, would, would I say I'm a Resident Evil fan? Absolutely not. No. But this is just the game that where they hit on like yeah. everything that works for me and apparently works for a lot of other people. Exactly. And so many other people really like Love this. Love this game, yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's also the rare game that I've played you know, well, well, well after the fact where I'd actually like elevate it in my mind because for after I played the GameCube version, I was like, "Oh, that's probably a top ten all time game for me." Yeah. But over the years, I thought, "Well, it's getting bumped by other stuff. It's mm -hmm. like maybe it's in like the top twenty five now." Yeah. And remember, I did have, I did play the Switch version, which was a very straight port that they released. Oh yeah. And I didn't play it for very long. I was kind of like in between games. I was like, oh, "I'll just fire this up." And I kind of didn't love it. I was like, "Oh, this is getting a little, it's this a little rough, feeling a little clunky." Yeah. Um. Not really working for me, but now that I've gone through this remake, it's like oh, it's 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 back in the top, solidly in the top ten. Yeah, I need to write this top ten list down. We need to do this. <laughs> we need to do a whole segment yeah. on this soon yeah. of our re-shifted top ten. Our twenty twenty three top ten list because that's going to be different. It's, it's totally fine for your different. list to change. Exactly, you change as right. people, so right. your list. So maybe will doing change. it annually is the way to go. Yeah, and just see what things are bu being bumped for yeah, other things. Yeah, I mean, things are going to come out that's going to like take take the place of other things. Right, right. Um, 
Yeah, I would say the other thing about this game that just makes it feel just, I don't know, like really good is like all the characters are so well done. Like obviously Leon and, and Ashley and whatever are like great, but even like the- Ramon? Okay. Ramon is good in his own. Little, I do, I do that like- little freak Ramon. A little freak. A little <laughs> what's freak his, in nature. What's his deal? Ramon. Um, <laughs> but even like the enemies- and all that stuff, like, the way they do it is, like, it's, like, you're scary. Like, yes, if I saw, like, some occult, like, crazy person in a, in a church speaking in Spanish and, like, zombified, like, that would scare me. But also, it's, like, kind of funny. I don't know, like, how are they yeah. how are they doing that? Yeah. But, like, it just feels, or, like, that, like, Rasputin guy. It's, like, this is actually pretty scary, mm -hmm. but also, like, why are you Rasputin? This yeah. is hilarious, right. you know? So, like, the way that they balance those characters, like, it's really good. Like, I don't know how they, they've done, they've never done that again in another Resident Evil game. They're just terrifying. Yeah. They're terrible. Yeah. And I don't like them. One other, like, really small detail that I liked a lot in the in the remake specifically, and this is this is only going to be on PlayStation Five. Is like the way they've used the triggers with the different guns. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Like, like you would think like, oh, like Call of Duty has like a satisfying way to shoot a gun or anything like that. But it's like this game has like the most satisfying. It's so sad. Like it, the way with the, when you switch to a shot from a shotgun. Or like sniping to like or like a rifle. Yeah, or a rifle. Like you really have to like pull that trigger. It feels like so good. And yeah. There are moments where it's like a beating heart in your hands. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Like yeah. that feels, they really do some cool things with that DualSense controller. Like yeah. that is what, that controller shines in that way for sure. Right, right. Um, so I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really have too much more to say about it other than it's incredible. Okay. That's it. Yeah. I'm going to beat it hopefully in the next couple of days. <laughs> well, you're Why going, are you so, so you're going on, you're, you're, you're doing this to yourself again. So you're going on a trip. You pro yeah. probably set some artificial deadline of I need to finish this game before I go Can on this trip. Can I remote play this game in my, on my trip? Um, probably. Maybe. What is it? Do you have an airplane game? See, this is my Bayonetta, problem. Bayonetta Origins maybe, demo. Maybe that's yeah. not, oh yeah. yeah. That's actually not a bad idea. I should probably just download you that. do that, yeah. Yeah, because I do need an airplane game. I was gonna bring the play date. Okay. Um, which is great for traveling. Yeah. It's so teeny. Um, but yeah. There you go. I don't think you're gonna finish this game in whenever you're leaving. But good luck. You don't you want love me to, to tell You love to tell yourself that you will. Uh, the other game that I played, this is this is the Steam Deck game that I was talking about, is a demo for a game that's not out yet called Tiny Thor. Oh. I guess this is coming out so cute. soon. They said this quarter. And I think this is coming to a lot of other platforms as well. I think I think it's coming to Switch and maybe some others, but definitely, definitely Steam Deck and Switch. And this is a 2D platformer where you play as like a kid version of Thor. Okay. But you get the hammer. And you can really like aim the hammer very precisely. It's like a Yoshi egg. And then it like ricochets like oh. all over all sorts of different things. So oh. it, the Yoshi egg comparison is actually not bad because okay. in, a, in like a Yoshi like a Yoshi game like you throw the egg. And yeah, you can like kind of sometimes you, have a you little need reticle. It, uh, yeah, yeah, like you. It's not the thing where it's the Yoshi thing where it's going up and down and yeah. you kind of choose it. Like you actually like aim exactly where you want it okay. to go. But yeah, like you use it to hit enemies, you use it to clear out stuff in the way, you use it to get treasure. It's just a pretty creative That's way to cool. do it. And it's it, a good it idea. It feels really good. Um, has really good music from what I've seen. Um, you can only play it a little bit from the demo. Um, but yeah, I, I really liked it. Awesome. Yeah. I'm glad you're using your Steam Deck. I am. Okay, yeah. good. Not going to waste <laughs> the really expensive doorstop. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And then um, you have it here. I'm very excited to see you watch the Tetris movie. I did. Well, I watched half of the Tetris oh, movie. Oh, you did what I do. I The movie is a two-hour movie. It's not oh, like really? the Mario movie that's like an hour yeah. and 20 minutes. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I've been just, it's been on my list for like, yeah. again, one of those things where it's like, where am I going to find like two hours to watch right. this movie? Um, but, yes, I finally got around to watching. I'm going to finish it tonight, I think. Good. Um, it is so much fun. Hmm. Like, I know this is not real. You know, like, again. Well, some of it's real. Well, I mean, it's based on a true story, obviously. But Tetris it's, exists. Tetris, Tetris exists. Tetris is real. Um, and it, it, it's highly dramatized. Sure. You know, obviously, you're, you're the guy is going to, like, the KGB, whatever. Like, yeah. that, that is highly, highly, highly dramatized. But the way that they, they um, kind of, again, it's one of those things where, like, if you love video games, the way that they're doing very, like, 
fun video game things. Like they they kind of split the movie up into different levels, like little uh, chapters, like level one, level two. They have these great interstitials when you know he's traveling from Japan to Russia or from Japan to America to go to Nintendo. There's these like really cute little eight bit interstitials that they do to really like get you into the gaming mindset. Um, so they're right in the very beginning of the movie. He goes and visits uh, Nintendo headquarters in Japan because mm -hmm. he's living in Japan. Um, this will be a different story, Tom. I can tell you right now that office does not look like that. Oh. <laughs> the Nintendo headquarters is all wrong. <laughs> but it was fun to see like their imagination of what Nintendo headquarters looks like in Japan. And they also go to Nintendo of America. It could have been special consultants for them. I mean, we're available. He was in the top floor of Mr. Yamuchi. I have been up there, so I could have been a consultant. That not accurate. Mm. Their their characterization of Mr. Yamuchi is pretty awesome, though. Okay. Very fun. Yeah. Um, did you get the feeling the people making this movie like knew a little bit, knew enough about games? Like, have there been any like really cringy like not at all. game over, man? Like, no, no. Actually, I feel like the people that made this movie must have some sort of like programming background or oh. game development background because they do a lot with like sort of they have a, a really cool um, relationship between uh, Hank, Hank Rogers, the guy that's like the main character, yeah. and the, the person that made like the creator of Tetris. Like yeah. they have a moment together where they're really like kind of sort of looking at the development of Tetris, like programming huh. it. And they also have a great moment with Howard Lincoln yeah. and uh, Arakawa right. at Nintendo of America where they're looking at the, the Game Boy and they have a moment where they're like really talking like shop, you know, okay. about the Game Boy. Oh, that's so good. I'm like, oh wow, like they talk about like Dot Matrix and like that, like how this all, like how the production of it all works. So it is like either they, somebody knows about it or someone researched it really well. Like that part of it I thought was really well done. All right, well that's good. That was one of the sort of latent worries I had was if they're sensationalizing no. so much of this, they could be like, eh, the details don't matter. Like it's it's just gonna be no, no. a zany thing. Yeah, there's some zany parts. Like there's some real weird like stuff that happens when he goes to Russia. I'm like, oh, um, that cannot be real. Yeah. Like literally is just dramatized, you right. know? Um, but yeah, overall, it's it's a really fun movie. It's a like they do a really good job. Is it a nonstop thrill ride? <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to get on the poster? Ten out of ten, <laughs> exhilarating thrill ride. Is it an exhilarating romp <laughs> and a nonstop <laughs> thrill ride? The world of Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> I give it two thumbs up. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, it's really, you should watch it. It's really good. Yeah, I, I I will watch this movie. I just need to. Uh, well, this is actually a good time for me to do it because I'm I have like a week of not really playing anything yeah. substantial until uh, Final Fantasy Pixel comes out. So yeah. I'll, I'll probably watch it this week. It's nice because it it did make me realize that in the span, just of the early part of this year, as we're talking about like the first quarter and yeah. stuff, like not only were we treated to so many wonderful games to play, like. Man, we're, we're really treated to like lots of cool entertainment things too. Like we've had obviously the the great Mario movie and then we have the Tetris movie, Last of Us, which I did not watch, but everyone loved. So I'm, I'm guessing that that was a thumbs up from people. Um, all my friends that are like not even video game fans watched Last of Us and was like, oh. it made me want to play Last of Us just to know what really? happens. Yeah, there were so many people that came to me and was like, why are you not watching this show? I'm like, I'm too scared. Um, and then like, yeah, there's like, you know, there's just been so, I read that great book too about video games. Right. It's like, we're really a boon day for video games. Like we're just yeah. having a nice like. Well, unless you're reviewing the Mario movie. Well, then you're dead inside. So <laughs> maybe you're, maybe the same people reviewing the Mario movie are the same people driving the, the Teslas with the vanity plates. Oh. Maybe there's a correlation there. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to hammer that Apple TV free trial, watch the movie, and immediately cancel it. You can do the free trial and also play a pocket card jockey. Oh, does that also get you, you a get free arcade, trial for yeah. Apple Arcade? Yeah. Well, I want to keep playing that, but then I'm going to cancel it, so. Three months. Do you still have, do you still have yours active? Yeah. Really? I still play a pocket card jockey every no, single day. I can. I can do without. I'm holding out for that to get a standalone release. Okay. I'm holding out. It's there. Um, 
more on uh, movie reviews and the Mario movie. But first, got to shout out our other sponsor for this episode, which is Ewan Racing. Woohoo! And thank you, Ewan Racing, Look for giving this. us this beautiful new desk, which is a yeah. permanent addition to our set. We love it. Yeah, we have been using this new desk. It's literally changed our life. Like now we can put cute little things on here. Wow. We can put our stuff here. We're not using, the little coffee table was I don't like. have a laptop falling off of my actual lap. <laughs> yeah. Five times an episode. Exactly. There's more yes. leg room for you, which is good because you're always like crunched, it's crunched so, into the corner. It's so true. Room. Yeah. We, you and I experience the world in very different ways. Well, yeah. Being about a, a foot or more difference in height. I'm sorry, yes. but I'm very comfortable and you have a lot of problems. See the world from my eyes. No. Up here. Why don't you see the world from my eyes? Anyhow, Ewan Racing has a wonderful variety of gaming chairs mm -hmm. and desks. Yes. Uh, this desk in particular was very easy to put together. Very easy. I did it myself yes, in about did. 15 minutes. Yes. Uh, comes with all the tools uh, and stuff you need. Mm -hmm. You can't see it here, but along the sides, it also has yeah. these RGB lights yes. that you can turn on. So really very stylish. There's like a control stylish. panel sort of right over there. Yeah, you can activate side. it from right there. Yep, there's little um, like places where you, if you set it up like a gaming desk, yeah. you can do your cable management. Right. Very easily, exactly. Here, which is, I really like that. So. And all the Ewan Racing um, desks and chairs come in a variety of designs and mm -hmm. sizes, so you can definitely find something that fits your taste. You, yeah. Again, you've had your eye on the all pink, I do want the all pink desk pink. and chair yes. set. Give it to me. Very nice. Yeah. This the, the desk is made really well. Yeah. Um, the top of it is sturdy. Is really nice and it doesn't. It's not getting scratched up or anything. Easy to clean. So so far we love it. And yeah, like you said, it's going to be a permanent. Um, Part of our set. That's right. So we have a link in the description of this uh, video or podcast, uh, which you can click through and use code KK to get 20% off of your order. Yeah, we'll put it in the description below. Yeah. Awesome. All right. News time. News, 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 which is all about Mario movie reviews. Yeah, we're going to start with a bunch of Mario movie stuff. So... <clears throat> yeah, let's start with the reviews. We're kind of going chronological <clears throat> order here. Yeah. So before the movie came out, we know this because we were following the embargo. The embargo was the afternoon before the movie came yeah. out. Yeah. Um, the, the actual critic reviews were, I think, not what anybody expected. Right. So in that, like right away, they were in, if, if you're using Rotten Tomatoes, they were in like the mid 40%, which is not good. And, and, and a lot of people may not know how Rotten Tomatoes works. It's, it's, either it's like not Metacritic. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Yeah, it's not Don't Metacritic. Don't give it like a number. It's like, you just say like rotten or not rotten. Right. So, the, so it's the percentage, you know, fresh. So 50, fresh, 50 yeah. or, you know, whatever percent of the people said this is a thumbs up, basically. Yeah. So um, if you're on the fence, I think, as a critic, you would give it a thumbs down, which is, I think, what happened to this poor movie. Well, this is, this is your outlook as a glass half empty person, I see, in life. No. Is it? I'm a glass half full. I'm a well. If you're if you're in the middle, person. you might I might give it a thumbs up because I'm an optimist. So don't well, say that's that. not what happened here. Yeah, don't say that because it well, got these 56. I mean, if you read the reviews, these people hated this movie. I don't understand hated, it. Hated. They're dead inside. Is what my so as of now, it's 56, which is still I guess you need to get over 60 percent to get the the tomato and not the little splatted grain thing, which is strange. Uh, I don't know. I don't like. I don't like this. Give me Metacritic. Audience score though, 96. Yeah. Audience score is at 96 percent, but yeah. The, the, the actual Rotten Tomatoes score is strange because if you compare it, like we we both were comparing it to other movies. Like, yeah. well, 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 what is the, like, we're not big movie review people. It's like, well, yeah. what is other stuff score? Yeah. So first Sonic movie, 64. Mm. Sonic 2, 69. Mm. Detective Pikachu, 68. This Tetris movie you were watching, 81. That's really good. Yeah. The Minions, and we've looked at, well, what's Illumination's well, Illumination stuff. last movie? Yeah. The Rise of Gru Minions, 70. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Fast and Furious 9, Popcorn Junk, 60. Oh. And your favorite movie, Star okay. Wars The Rise of Skywalker, the Disney magic on Star Wars, 52. 52. That one is pretty bad. I think that's quite charitable for that movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, the audience score is at 96%. What, what, what do you think happened here? Well, I think that these critics are going in to this not understanding that they're going in to watch a Super Mario Brothers movie. Like, let's let's set our expectations here, people. You're going in to watch a movie that's not going to be like, you know, like Scorsese's next hit. Like, you're not watching, like, 
uh, Pulp Fiction or whatever it is. You know, you're going to go in to watch a Super Mario Brothers movie. The expectation is that it's going to be fun. It's going to make you happy. It's going to showcase characters. Well, that nobody you... wants that. Everyone just wants to like wallow in the misery we want of the last human of us. society yes, forever. We want that. Great. That's not art. Fun? Are you joking? It makes me so mad, honestly. <laughs> I'm just like when you gave this game a nine or this, this movie 9. a nine 5? and a half. Yeah. I, I just don't understand why a movie being lighthearted, fun, just like. Every time I've seen this movie, and I've seen it three times, people have come out of this theater with a giant smile. Everyone has come out of this theater with a giant smile on their face. Yeah. Everyone has, I've, I've heard other people's conversations that's like, oh my gosh, what if, you know, I, I felt like a kid again when I was watching this movie, or like, I can't, I was so happy to share it with my kid, and he, he loved it, and like, p little kids were singing the Superstar song, like running out of the movie theater, you know, like... <laughs> If that doesn't count for something, what the heck are we doing? One of the right? common, less vitriolic criticisms I saw, and I want to know what you think of this, was if you don't know much about Mario, or you, or you don't, you just flat out don't <clears throat> really know anything about Mario, yeah. you're not going to understand it. I mean, the story is pretty simple, so even if you don't know much about Mario, you might not understand it but i think that that was what where a lot of other reviewers like really came down hard on this movie is like the story is too simplistic it doesn't have a lot of depth it feels empty and hollow it's just like fan service with easter eggs i suppose if you have no prior relationship with nintendo or mario at all you might not have those m moments of joy that you and i or a nintendo fan would have looking spotting all these easter eggs and seeing your favorite characters portrayed in, in a fun way. So sure, maybe that's the case. But even so, you're going into a movie where there's like jokes that are pretty universal. There are There's a storyline that's pretty easy to follow. Like, what's the deal? What's the problem? <laughs> I, I really didn't get the criticism of it just being, of there being too many references. Mm -hmm. Because you've got, you know, 30 whatever years of material right. that this is based on. Yeah. And none of it is like, oh, if you don't understand this reference, you're not going to understand the movie. It's all kind of hidden in the background. Yeah, for you're fans, still watching the story. For fans like, to see and enjoy. And if you don't, like, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But I, I saw some people getting really mad about that, of like, this is just, you know, there's no, con there's no actual material to this. It's just fluff that was to get fans happy. That I was really curious about, too. Like, there were so many of the, the bad reviews that really focused on, like, this, this movie has no substance. It's just like this like sort of like roller coaster ride that it's like a thrill like yeah. for one time. Or like it's like eating a bunch of candy instead of eating a real meal. Like you eat the candy and like you're hungry later. Yeah. But it's like, but don't you have fun when you're on the roller coaster? Don't you have fun when you're eating the candy? Right. Like couldn't you just see it as that experience? Like no, it's not like Godfather where it's like a steak dinner, you know, but it's like, yes, it is like, you know, fun and it's like fun in the moment. So it's kind of sad that critics can't like com compartmentalize yeah, it like that, yeah. I guess. For me, like that's what, I do, what I'm doing. Like that's why I think this movie is good. So you know? gave it a nine and a half. I gave it a nine. Yeah. I, to be clear, like I'm not expecting, I'm like, why, why isn't there an average review a nine? Like I, I can see no. why people might want to drop it lower, but, but some of those reviews seem to be gleefully mean. Yeah, there's it. somebody gave it like a 23 or something like that percent that I saw, and like the review yeah. itself was like pure like gibberish. Really harsh. Really, and it was really like harsh. A, a, it was like the San Francisco Chronicle, which I'm mad at because I live in San Francisco and you cannot give it a 23. I will come after you. So the, the, so the thing that <laughs> happened that I said would happen happened. I went to go see my mom yesterday, and she she waved oh, no! she waved the newspaper at me. Said, "Look, they wrote about the Mario movie in in the Chronicle." And it was that that Chronicle guy well, was. Yeah. This was not, so this paper was weird. I looked at it and it was about, this was a full page article and they were oh, like. not the review. No, they said, there have not been a lot of Mario movies. There hasn't been one since the 90s. Yeah. Here are several fan made movies that you might enjoy. I was like, oh, the Chronicle's going to get sued by Nintendo. Oh no, <laughs> they're going to get ninja'd. The Chronicle What a though. weird article. But yeah, she was waving it in my face. <laughs> that guy gave it a 23. Who is he? Well, who cares? I mean, I really got the feeling that a lot of these people had not been exposed 
to video games or Mario or Nintendo. Like, have they not been since exposed they saw, to any kind of fun ever? Since they saw it in a Sears catalog in 1988. What happened like, to that you was it. as a child? And they were just like, nope, I hate this. Never again. And they just like haven't had to think about it or be exposed to it. Who which has is, hurt you? Which is interesting. Reviewers. And yeah, I, I just found some of the reviews to be to really go out of their way to be mean spirited. Yeah. Uh, but guess what? It doesn't matter because the movie made, made bank. Yeah, made. And there was it's so so much money. It's so interesting to see the video game community like try and follow along with the movie industry, which we don't know anything about. We cannot to be follow. extremely clear. Yeah. Because like, why is there a new projection coming out literally every thirty minutes? I know. And everyone's like, "Yay! It did the thing!" And then, oh, it's it happened again. Like, <laughs> what, what's going on now? I know. It's like up and down, and it's like, oh, wait, this is not the right. This is not the real number. And this I really. Is I really don't get how they can project the day without the day happening. Well, they looked at the day before, Because right? it's like Sunday morning. They were like, well, it's broken the weekend record. It's like, well, Sunday hasn't happened. Well, they're just, it's just going to keep going up, though. If but how do you know? Broke, if you already broke... It's going to go down. They had a very specific number. I mean, I guess you can pre, you pre-buy oh, pre, tickets. Pre -buy. But, I mean, not everybody. You don't have to do that. You can walk up and it's buy a crazy. ticket. It's crazy. It's crazy that, that. The, 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 you know, best... Some of these stats are, like, insane. Like, best right. ever global launch for an animated movie. Right. So, so let's go the through some of these. Best five-day launch ever. The five-day opening, it made $377 million worldwide. Mm. 205 million of those were domestic, domestic in the yeah. United States. My projection was 125. Mine Yours was 115. 115. So blew it out of the water. I, I mean, but, that. but those were very aggressive projections when I we know. made them. Like, I know. Some people were saying like you're crazy. Oh, some people were like, oh, it's gonna be like 65 right. at most. I'm like, okay. So that makes it the best ever global launch for an animated movie, beating Frozen 2. Yeah. What, what happened to Frozen? Well, Frozen is a huge franchise. So Frozen 2 was a fantastic movie. And I think because you already have the existing fan base of Frozen 1, the expectation is that Frozen 2 is going to do Game Busters, which it did. Yeah. That beat this. This is movie 1. Can you imagine right. movie 2? Jeez. Um, and the other little factoid was this was the best ever five-day launch. I mean, it, it was unusual for it to launch on a Wednesday. Yeah. It was, it was good. It was good timing because Easter weekend. It was Easter weekend. People are out. Like you were saying, it's like spring break. There were all these <clears> kids in your in your so showing. many kids. Yeah, perfect. So I, they, I went to a Saturday afternoon showing, and it was like packed full of families. Yeah, so good good job by Universal yeah. to put it in the right place. Really, really smart. But I think even the most like bullish projectionists could not have anticipated no. this. I mean, this is. Incredible. But so. this is my opportunity to say that my big prediction was One this movie would make a billion dollars. Billion. Now people are saying this is a lock to make a billion dollars after this opening. Uh, I'm going on the I Was Right tour for six months <laughs> after it hits a billion dollars. So you'll be doing this by yourself. Okay. See, I'll see you in six months. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> the I Was Right tour across America. I am embarking on that. Yes. Um, You're perfectly qualified for that. Right. But wow. I mean that it was it was fun watching over the weekend so as fun. like the number yeah. was this a role playing game because the number just kept going up <laughs> <laughs> of watching Mario movie numbers. Oh man! So ultimately, these these reviews mean very little. Yeah. Because obviously, people are going to see this movie and they love this movie. Yeah. 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 But let's go back to what we're saying at the top about this being. You know, really this culmination of the plan that Mr. Iwata had yeah. a long, long time ago. Really I found, I mean, long time I mean, ago. I found this article now. This was from 2015. Yeah. Saying, Satoru Iwata says Nintendo's audience expansion could include movies and TV programs. Yeah, yeah. So this was a, a, a drum. This, is, this had always been one of his things of expanding... Expanding the gaming audience was his first thing. Yeah. And that was with Wii and DS. Right. And absolutely Successful achieved in, that. In achieving that. But it was really in the dark days of the Wii, Wii U yeah. and the 3DS where he kind of adjusted that to say, <clears throat> we need to leverage our IP to bring new people into, into the, the fold universe. of the Nintendo yeah. ecosystem. Yeah. And, and really interesting, I think, as we were, you know... Soaking in all of Mr. Awada's philosophies and strategies and all that stuff. Um, he was very, very much a great leader in that way where he shared his vision truly with, with everyone. And all of us were like totally on board with this. And it kind of started with um, 
like he's very into like research and education. So we all read that book, the Blue Ocean book. And like that was, he like really built a foundation for us to understand his vision. Yeah. And he, he really went out of his way to like educate all of us on his belief that Nintendo is not a video game company. That really stuck with me. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you think immediately, like I'm working at a video game company. We make video games and video game consoles. But no, for him, it was, we are an entertainment company, first and foremost. Like really shifting the entire company's mindset into thinking that we're an entertainment company, I think set the company up, no, no matter how many years it took, 10 plus years, to where we are right now, where this movie just made $377 million. Right. And one of the thoughts I had when I saw the terrible reviews was like, this does really <laughs> reinforce the reason why he wanted to do this whole um, IP expansion, audience expansion program in the first place. Because it's easy to think, oh, everybody knows Nintendo, everybody knows Mario, most people probably like Mario, but all these reviews show there's That's a lot not of the case. there's a lot of people yeah. who aren't there yet. Right. And like these are exactly the type of people who are finally getting exposed at least to mm -hmm. Mario. Like maybe their their first reaction to this wasn't positive, but it's the first step on a journey. Yeah. I'm sure that's how the company sees stuff. Like, all right, we're gonna have more. More things are gonna happen. There are gonna yeah. be more ways that they're gonna get exposed to this, and eventually we'll win them over. Right, right. And that's the whole that was the whole business model, too. Like, is how do we expose people? It doesn't have to be a movie, obviously. This is one way. Obviously, it's a great way. Um, but it could be like the theme park that's available now. Yeah, so so what were some of the big things that were part of this push? So there's obviously the theme park was, mm -hmm. I think, the first really big one that we yep. learned about. Um, movies, I mean, the movie one took a long time to materialize, but yeah. that was happening in yeah. that time right. when, he, when he was talking when about it. he was it. talking about it. The, um, all of the stuff with partners like Lego yeah. and all the you know, apparel and some of the other big sort of partnerships that just get, that gets your brand out in a different yeah. way yeah. was a huge part of it. And the other one, and I would say this has been the iffiest of them all, but I think if you view it strictly from audi audience expansion has probably been a, a net positive is mobile games. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly. You know, has there's not been a big hit Nintendo game like mm -hmm. they would have liked, but there's just a lot of people who aren't going to buy a dedicated gaming system right. who are going to play that way. Yeah, and you know, it's it's a smaller priority for them. I think they'll probably keep keep plugging away at it though. Yeah, um, they did acquire the D uh, the DNA company or whatever it's called, right? Uh, yeah, so, so they're 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 putting resources there yeah. somewhere. Yeah, and you do have to look at it through the perspective of you know 2015 or or whenever it was that all of these things were happening. Of like, wow, there were definitely critics of this saying like, wow, you're kind of selling out the company and its values because mm -hmm. you're in the hole. Yeah, so, or you're not staying focused on what you do best, which is making games. Right. And that's why you're in the hole. Yeah, it's like, or, or you're negotiating from a real point of weakness. Yeah, not to, anymore, obviously. <laughs> oh yeah, obviously not anymore. Things have changed. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's important to see the contrast of where this started, where the company was like in dire, dire, dire straits mm -hmm. to where it is now, which is like potentially as strong as it's ever been and, right. and truly set up for like long-term success in all of these different businesses now. And all of that is thanks to this great, um, like audience and IP expansion. Like he saw it before. Right. It he saw it in the darkest time, which is right. what's, what's truly sort of amazing about it. And mm -hmm. and even like we talked a lot about this with when we talked about when we talked about Wii U is that like even with Wii U, like that obviously did not work and was not um, was not successful. But it was positioned less like a gaming console, more like an entertainment. Um, you know console or, or feature yeah um and there was like so many times where mr wada's vision was like let's message we you not just for playing games but for you like watch tv and for you to do all sorts of stuff the, the hub of the living room or whatever so even during that same time where he was thinking about this kind of ip expansion he was trying to like inject that even into nintendo's core business of video games mm -hmm. obviously that shifted a little bit now that we have switch in the market and it's doing its its thing it's like autopilot doing its thing there's more of a you know sort of ability to focus on these like true 
um, IP expansion projects like a movie in a theme park and, and whatever yeah, is coming yeah. next. And that's definitely also reflective of like the long term vision of like, I don't know how many companies would have the appetite for, you know, an eight to 10 year plan when you're mm -hmm. like, I need money now. I'm, I'm hurting now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Easy to make a blunder and sort of sell yourself short right. um, versus waiting it out and, and putting something out when it's the right timing right, and, right. and when it, it, it you know, works the best yeah. for the company. The only, the only sad thing is he, he can't be here with us to see all of yeah. the success. That's all why it was so wonderful to see his name in the credits. Yes. Cause this was, I, I was like hoping that they would pay some sort of homage to him because this was what he was talking about all of those years ago. And again, it's such a joyful moment to like see it all, you know, happen. And, and I know that, you know, he would be so proud. So yeah, it's really yeah. cool. Um, before we move off of the Mario movie, we do also have a great poll that we did with our Patreon subscribers. Um, we wanted to just ask them what they thought of the movie. Uh, and we asked them to rate it one through five. Five being the best, one being the worst. I'll take you through what people said. Zero percent of people said a one. Okay. So nobody hated it. Okay. Two percent said a two. Okay. Fourteen percent said three. Fifty-one percent said four, mm -hmm. and thirty-three percent said five. Nice. Which I think I think this very reasonable. Yeah, I think this re reflects a good range of perspectives um the keggers said it's a movie made for mario fans and i'm a huge mario fan definitely a five for me i don't understand the critiques on the plot it is exactly what it should be for a movie about mario loved every second of it then said i definitely thought 3.75 out of five so i rounded up to a four for a mario movie it has everything it needed to work however there were a few small drawbacks but everything else kind of makes up for it all I can tell for sure is this is the start of something more. It can only get better from here on out since Nintendo and the studios probably knows what worked and what didn't and can work from there along with the audiences and general public's reactions from it. That's mm -hmm. a great point. That's a good point, yeah. Thomas O'Rourke said, the movie is definitely flawed, but it's so fun and exciting to watch that the flaws don't really matter to me in the end. I've seen it twice both times and I was feeling amazed when I left the theater. Mm -hmm. And finally, Mark Cruz said, it was the most fun I've ever had in the theater for me. I'm not a film cr critic. I am just me and I loved it. We're all there just me. Go. We're all just me. We're, We're all, all just, just Mark me. Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> um, great, well said, awesome community comments as usual, very balanced and <laughs> normal. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but I, I think so too. I think generally the, you know, obviously the user score is very, very high for this movie. I think generally all of the people that are actually going on and watching this movie are having a good time and are enjoying it. And um, yeah, I think, I think that's good. That's great to see. Yeah. Now something I'm wondering if it's going to happen is like when this movie gets to close to certain thresholds, like when it gets close to a billion or if there's, if it's close to unseating something really big and notable, well, like the community band together, be like, let's get it over. Let's get it over this hump. Everyone buy it on Amazon. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know if the, av I can't, I'm so weirded out by Avatar. <laughs> like, does anybody actually like Avatar yet it's made like the most money, money in like any, any movie? How, do we know how much money they spent on the movie? Someone said a hundred million? On the Mario movie? Yeah. That's usually readily available for movies. I believe someone has said a hundred million. Yeah. So if that's the case, dang, they made it back already. You vamp for one minute. I'm gonna look that up. Okay, you are looking it up. A hundred. I know million a site dollars. that that has that stuff. Really? Yes. What site is that? Box oh, the Office Mojo. Mojo. The Box Office Mojo. So let's yeah, see what I they would say. love to know what they they say this movie is. Uh. How much do they make? How much does movies cost? Right. That's interesting. They don't have it listed here so I'm, you're, but you're, I, I mean that'll definitely come out at your some point. point about avatar makes me think about like avatar is going to cost a whole bunch more money to make oh, yeah. than the mario oh yeah there it says i just googled it it said 100 million there you go so okay. that's, All right. that's pretty reasonable that's i think for a reasonable. movie like this how much do you think nintendo put into it? is it like a 50 50 i think they said it was 50 50 50, 50. Yeah. So 50 million dollars i don't know if that includes marketing though i don't know how that how it bad? may have just been for the production of the yeah movie. maybe marketing was like a like extra like they basically did the marketing for because i for it i think universal paid for the marketing is my point i think i remember hearing somebody say and this again this could be totally wrong but typically for a big movie the marketing is about the same as the cost of the movie million so to market the movie but you, you might go even higher if you think like i got a really big hit yeah i mean look at all I the mean, stuff the, that they did they have gone wild Way over the top with the with the marketing for this movie so yeah it's, it's quite yeah. possible that it was more. good for them okay well 
Either case, even if the marketing was $100 million, the movie cost $100 million, so $200 yeah, million. Yeah, so now you're in the profit. They're already making profit now. Yeah, yeah right, right, they're, right. They're profitable already, so. Uh, let's get off this movie. Well, th no. there's questions from the community. No, we have more news. Oh, we have more news. Jeez. <laughs> Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster. Uh, we there you go. Before. It finally got a launch date. This, this, the, the path of this game has been so it's weird. Bizarre. Well, as, the mobile. As somebody, who the has, mobile. as somebody who has really wanted this game, watching it closely has been maddening. You're like, where is it? So, first... Yes, we're, we're making this game. It's going to be on PC and mobile only. Yeah. Oh, well, that makes sense to nobody but you and maybe not even you. Great. Uh, it also had this bizarre font that everybody hated. Oh, yeah. And the they font. refused to change. Uh, they finally announced <laughs> it. Why did they do that? I don't know. They finally announced it for consoles. Great. I love that. And they say, okay, it's coming out in spring. We get into spring. There's no release date at all. Yeah. And, but they're also doing weird stuff. They're like charging people. Oh, it's like, oh yeah, they also put up like the physical versions on sale at like 1230 in the middle of the night oh, one day. Oh, yeah. And it just like sells out while people are like asleep. Super weird. Okay. And it's like, oh yeah, we're, we're charging people's credit cards, but there's no release date. Finally, we get the date. It's April 19th, super soon. They are putting in a new font. Thank goodness. <laughs> but it's just like, I just have to recognize like this has been the weirdest path for a yeah. game Who in a long time. This? I don't know. Why is it so didn't have to be this way. It didn't have to be this way. You didn't have to make it so confusing. So who's calling the shots here? Huh? Very, I, ju very I just can't. I ju but at least it's coming now. Yes. You have a date and there's a new font. There yes, you go. That, it all ended well, goodness. but the convoluted path it took to get here was very and then, But now they're also promoting like a super specific time where like it goes live. Normally it's just like, oh, it's just coming out on this day. Now they're like, oh, it's 3 p.m. whatever. What? Fine. I will, again, I'm getting at the moment it, yeah. it goes live, but it's been weird. Yeah. Uh, last news story. Surprising to some people, but not us. Nintendo oh, has yeah. shut down a big new Breath of the Wild multiplayer mod oh, the mods. that don't has like been that. going around. So this guy, uh, Point Crow, put out this mod um, in early April. Basically turns Breath of the Wild into a multiplayer game. Mm -hmm. People seem to like this. People seem to say it was cool. Yeah. But surprise, surprise, uh, a few days later, he got, got hit with the copyright claims on all of his videos and stuff. Um, but he, this guy seems surprised about this. So he put out a statement saying, mm -hmm. I'm incredibly disappointed that Nintendo of America has decided to block my videos of Breath of the Wild. It's the love for the community and the innovation that we bring to it that has kept it alive and brought new people. That's gibberish. I hope you reverse your decision soon. Um, no, they won't be. Then he said, uh, a few days later, he says, as of now, the videos are still visible for you to watch. However, they are not monetized. Hopefully Nintendo releases these claims as I significantly transform their work and my videos are under fair use. No, <laughs> that That's just going to make them even mad. They're going to be so mad at you. Oh my gosh. I, d I don't think you have a legal ground to stand on saying I transformed no. your copywritten work. Material, unfortunately. And so now, I can, no. so now I can do it? I don't think that works. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I can understand. Like, he definitely, you know, has the intention of, like, I don't think it comes from, like, a malicious place, obviously. Right. He's, like, doing it because he loves Zelda. He's doing it because he wants to keep the game alive and have more people play it or... You know, it's something that's interesting to him, obviously. So it's not like he's like rubbing his hands evilly in the corner, like I want to do. But this I'm consistently thing, surprised but... at the people who make who do these mods or make these fan yeah. games, and then when it gets taken down like a week, they're like, "What? what? I, I can't believe this! Yeah. What's going on? Like, yeah. you should know this is yeah, going to happen. Is, this is not your IP. Right. You don't own this property, and obviously, it, and it's happened enough times where like somebody has to yeah. like, hey, this is going to get taken down. One of your right. one of your buddies, your modern buddies. Yeah, yeah, and the, uh, the other thing is, that I think everything for any Breath of the Wild stuff is going to get highly, highly scrutinized right now because Tears of the Kingdom is coming out soon. Right, like, Nintendo certainly does not want to have anything that's out there that's confusing for you know, new players that are coming to Tears of the Kingdom. So, dangerous times for Zelda modders. Take note. Don't do it. Um, yeah, yeah. It's probably not going to end too well for you, even if you come from a good place, unfortunately. Yeah. So. 
Let's get into the uh, questions from our Patreon community. We source each and every question from our Patreon subscribers. We're going to start off with a trio. We thought we were done with the Mario movie. No, we're not. No, we're we got not. a trio of questions. First is from Kai X. K2 and K1. Can you believe that? Those were our tickets of the movie. We were at seats, I was K1. seats K1 and K2. Uh, one thing that surprised me about the Mario movie was how minor the Legend of Zelda Easter egg was. Did you even see this? I don't think I even saw I this. Had, I had to look it up. Okay. We will not say what it is. To, 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 oh, we don't want to spoil it. But. Mm. Given that it's kind of Nintendo's other golden goose, I thought it would be more represented. Do you think that fran that franchise was intentionally downplayed for one reason or another in terms of movie slash series plans? So, one could argue that putting an Easter egg in one movie has no impact at all in what you might be doing with it in yeah. another, mm -hmm. but yet, and yet, it's a very Nintendo thing to do, I think. It is a very Nintendo yeah. thing <laughs> So I, I, I tend to agree with this. Yeah. Nintendo knows that their Easter eggs will be highly scrutinized and picked up to the point where we were so concerned that Reggie was wearing a Metroid pin uh. during some sort of like TGA yeah. thing that we made him take it off because we knew the fan community would pick it up and would instantly like go to jump to the conclusion that new Metroid game is right. coming. So if Nintendo is putting an Easter egg in something, that probably does mean something is coming because they know that that's what the fans will talk about. They wouldn't do it if it wasn't true, I guess, if that makes sense. But again, it, it would just be one of a hundred Easter eggs in the movie. Right. It was like, oh, are we making a F-Zero movie? Are we making a Star Fox? There are, there are references to that. But, but again, Anything is possible. In, in the Nintendo brain, that's yeah, the kind that's of logic. The kind of logic of like, oh, though. we can't tip our hand about this thing. Unless it's true. I mean, it, more practically, like it could be that that series has been promised to another studio or mm -hmm. some other team and they yeah. said you know they, there could have been a request they please don't do this or maybe there's some legal reason like yeah. contractually, contractually only can. we can represent right. this thing yeah. this way so there could be a lot of different yeah like, businessy reasons i haven't seen it. a lot of people making this point but i think it's a good one the other one that i don't was there a metroid easter egg in this there is either? not I don't there think. was none yeah. that i have seen or that have I heard of seen it. yeah so that's the other one that made me think of like oh that might there might be something going on yeah there they might have other plans for that ip that is not within the uh, the universal um illumination like universe or whatever so. right right yeah and you might think Metroid is like, oh, well, that's that's like a big step down from Mario and Zelda in terms of people's perception of it and like obviously how much the game sells. But it is way bigger in the West than Japan, which matters mm -hmm. when it comes to, to movies, honestly. Yeah. It's also a, a, like a series that a lot of big name like people in movies always talk always about. Talk like, about. oh, I want to do this. Yeah. Like Brie Larson's like, oh, I'd, lo I'd love to play Samus. Or all these directors yeah. like, oh, I'd love to make, I'd a, love to I'd make, to make a Metroid movie. movie. So yeah. I do wonder if they have been really courted now that the gates are open yeah. to like, let's, let's do this. I also think Nintendo does see Metroid as a huge potential. Like yeah. whenever we would market a Metroid game, it was always like, treat this as a triple A title that yeah. it is. Yeah. Treat it like a Mario game. Me and I think, that, it like and that. I think that could make an awesome movie too. Like I would... The love, source I would material love is so yeah. perfect it would be great. for a movie or a TV show or whatever because it's like all there for you. The, yeah. You don't have to like reinvent the wheel on this one. Just write, just like write the movie. Like yeah. it's so easy. Yeah. That question is from Riven, and Riven has included a link here to this interview with uh, Mr. Miyamoto and, and fake Steve Ballmer um, <laughs> with Variety. The question is, have you seen this interview with Miyamoto? In it, he talks about how Princess Peach was always supposed to be more of her own strong character. What do you think about this? How much truth do you think there is in that statement in particular? Are there any other bits of the interview that really stand out to you? I had, I got the sense that, and this is definitely from when we worked on like um, Odyssey, that the Japanese perception of a strong character and maybe in the West, in the US, our perception of a strong character is very different. That just might be a cultural thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm thing. chalking this up to cultural differences. I think it's cultural differences. <laughs> right. Because we would have these like really deep conversations about that whole like force into marriage trope for the Odyssey game. And we bring up things that we were like, this is a major concern. Like we need to, you know, do a lot of work to message around this or we need to have some sort of, some sort of explanation for why this is happening in 20, 
17 or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, and we were always met with such curiosity, like, why is this a problem? Like, tell us more. Like, not like they didn't believe us. They just didn't think about it in that way, I think. Yeah. So I, I think it's the, the perception of, like, quote, more of her, her own strong character is really, really different um, in Japan. Yeah. So. I can, I, I mean, I can totally just envision the argument there. I like, oh, well, you can play her in these games, and she can do the same things that Mario can, and yeah. you can beat the game as her, and that's and that's enough. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah but there's a lot of different ways to look at it. There's a lot of different it. ways. Um, it was interesting to see like what other bits from this this whole press junket they did got got taken out. Like lots of little quotes got taken out of context. I thought, yeah, that whole thing about like mobile, mobile games. I saw like, that. Who cares? Like. I think we all knew yeah. we weren't Why doing is this that like again. Yeah, like a big like news headline. I don't know, but okay. Right, or, or the fact that he mentioned Nintendo, like, oh, there's going to be news in a future Nintendo Direct. I didn't yeah. realize. I didn't know this would happen. <laughs> what do they put in Nintendo Direct? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Interesting stuff. Uh, Vezvez has the next question. Thank you for the pronunciation guide. Hi, Kate and Krista. With the Mario movie out and digging its adorable cat Mario claws into the world, I'm curious what you think about if or how the movie might affect the Mario franchise going forward. Do you think they will get more adventurous with game content? I was thinking about this specifically after how Peach was portrayed. It was so great to see her take charge. These characters have really have personalities now instead of how we usually see them in games where they're not saying much and just grunting or sighing. And I think mm -hmm. audiences might want more of that. Do you think this major step into a different entertainment medium will push them forward with exploring this more in games or do you think they will keep them more separated? What would you personally like to see them do? Thanks. Mario the movie, the game? Mario the movie, the game. Are you still holding out hope for this? Um, I want Are it. you? I'm, I, I'm honestly asking. I don't think it's going to happen. <sighs> My hope is dwindling fast. If 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 it is happening, hopefully it will be this holiday. But I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit. Um, I really don't see, and it's kind of a missed opportunity from from my point of view. But this is not a Nintendo doesn't do this. Like they they just want the game, um, the game play to speak. For itself more so than the story they did this for, for all their games even in like a game like zelda where like we were like give us more story they're like no just play this game fuse this log and fuse this meat arrow and have fun you know they really are focused more on the gameplay part of it versus the story part of it and i don't think that um is going to change at all i don't think they're going to like radically shift a mario game into more of like a story driven character development driven kind of kind of franchise so yeah i think this is, this is a good point and i've i've seen a fair number of people making this point i think this is a case where maybe the fans thinking is a little bit ahead of where nintendo is yeah because you're right and, and we, we talk about this in the video of like yeah. what comes next for nintendo after the movie made all this money which is yeah we partnered with illumination and universal to make a movie because they know how to make a movie we know how to make games so leave that to us and we'll keep them separate right but I do think the next time a Mario game comes out, and if it is really just kind of the same Mario formula, I think there are going to be pockets of criticism of yeah. like, you have not really learned anything from this. Right. And you've not really evolved this franchise based mm -hmm. on this huge hit movie that you had. So I think yeah. it might actually be a couple iterations of games into the future mm -hmm. where they might, might, they may, they may never, they may really resist it where they might start to think a little bit differently and reflect things yeah. in a new way. I think they're going to resist it. Right. I think the probably the, the easiest way to pay this off, um, pay off the movie, is they probably will just even go less on any sort of story. They will like flip entirely the other way, where they will just focus even more on gameplay. Um, maybe it just means Peach is playable you know, forever she's a playable character <laughs> so that there's never a, a time again where she's kidnapped and forced right. into marriage. But I don't think, you know, from a, like a character development standpoint, that's going to be a big focus for them in the game. Yeah. I mean, it's been a long time now since we've had a new Mario game. Where is our 2D Mario so, game? So what that means is like whatever they've been, they, they're always working on a Mario game. Is, yeah. Th that had to have been happening around the same time the movie was being made. So it's not like they didn't have access to that right. stuff or didn't know. Yeah. So it'll be really interesting to see. I still think there's some kind of Mario game coming out this holiday. Like, there's got to be. There's got to be. Where is yeah. it? 
I guess, yeah, I mean, if we find out around E3. what would have been E3 time. Yeah, June. Yeah, that's that's probably... It could, have, it could be... I would. What I would love for them to do, um, and I think that would kind of fit well with the movie, is a Mario and Luigi RPG. All right. Because that would, like, help kind of solidify the Mario and Luigi relationship, which is very forward. And those those games do have a bit more story to it, so that could be kind of cool, but we'll see. All right. We'll see. We're off of the Mara movie again. We're, we're off, we're off, we're off. This is, this is the fun uh, double up question here. I like I these. Love these. Prince Charmless has part one. Hello, Kit and Krista. Imagine waking up one morning and you realized YouTube had gone poof. Uh oh. Disappeared and out of existence. What alternative video sharing website would you use? Is there going to be a replacement? Is this going to be the end of social media? And then Riven adds on to add to the above. If Twitter collapses into the void, do you have a different social media in mind you would use as a replacement? As the head of social for the Kit and Krista oh, Empire, no. what is your thoughts? Well, YouTube going away would be a real problem, <laughs> to be honest. Because the, the, there's, I mean, for, for all the criticisms people have of YouTube, like it is a really good platform. And, you know, for us as creators, I think it's one of the best as yeah. far as actually giving us opportunities to monetize mm -hmm. and grow community and do all of that stuff that yeah. you need to do it full time. Like we talk to people who True. are TikTok creators and they're like, oh, I, I can't make any money at all yeah. on TikTok, like, right. like zero. Right. And I have like, you know, a million followers. Right. So that's a big problem. Yeah. Um, you mean you don't want to do a two hour podcast in three minute TikTok increments? We could always go, I mean, the, the real like extreme scenario here is like, well, well, we're just, we're strictly on Patreon. Yeah. Is like, well, this platform is gone. You know, thankfully we've been able to amass Grow this community. community so it's like, well, it's like, and they're the ones keeping us going anyway. Right. Right. In the majority. Yes. Much, so honestly, much we, more than we make on, on YouTube. Yeah. So we would just is do on it Patreon. There. So right. th that, that's what an extreme, Thank God for Patreon. that's an extreme scenario. I don't think, I don't think YouTube is going anywhere. Thankfully. Um, <laughs> Please they, don't. they seem to be doing just fine. Twitter yeah. now, that that was a conversation mm. a lot of people who work in social media had been having of like, oh, I, I use our company uses Twitter for customer service stuff, or yeah. other other really important things. Mm. We need to find an alternative. I haven't found a lot of these people have actually found alternatives. I don't think there is a good alternative, and honestly. There's been a lot of saber rattling by people of like, I'm gonna quit Twitter, I'm leaving Twitter. Yeah. A lot Mastodon of those, win. A lot of those people I still see on Twitter. I know. I think a lot of people who use Twitter need to be honest and admit they're addicted to, like, physically addicted to using Twitter yeah. and are not, like, barring something truly, truly extreme, they're not actually going to leave. They don't, I don't think they can. Right. I think that the, the hold on them is so strong at this point. I don't know what they would do without, without it. It's one of those platforms where it's like, well, I can do everything that Twitter offers in different ways on other platforms, but there's not really one that does it all in that combination yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and functions the way that Twitter does. Yeah. So, And also I think the other thing is people expect a certain type of content on Twitter and it's frankly the easiest type of content to yeah. make. Right, right, right. So, so I, I, I mean, but if Twitter did go away, like I'd see that would be not as bad maybe le less of an issue. I think away. people yeah. would, would congregate around probably there would be sort of a shakeout period of like, well, what is the next thing mm -hmm. going to be? We're, we're all across these three or four things before they consolidate on something. Yeah. I think that would be less of a disaster. Right, right. Yeah. Slowbro has the next question. You've previously mentioned how important it was for you to pronounce Pokemon. 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 Correctly. Were there any other character or franchise names whose pronunciation was so strictly monitored? Were there any names that you learned you had been pronouncing wrong once you started working at Nintendo? Some of my worst offenses are Samus, Ryu, and Melee. Uh, Ryu, Ryu, I definitely called Ryu for a long time. Yeah, Ryu is, yeah, that one's a, a hard one, I think. For I also time. used to pronounce the, this is, and this is like just dumb on my part, the company Tecmo. I used to call oh. them Temco. Oh, that, you had like a, you transpose the letters. But it's spelled T-E-C-M-O, so it's very yeah, obvious, Tecmo. Like Tecmo yeah. But it's called Tecmo. The other thing is we did, we did have people that were in the East Coast or like working at the Nintendo New York store uh, that would say Mario or people in Canada would say Mario instead of Mario. I have seen like people correct them, even though it's just like an accent thing, I think. 
correct them to say like, oh, it's but that's a, I mean, within the company, that's a very strict like, do not call him Mario. Right, but some people do it though because it's just the way that they hear it around them in the East Coast. So th th I have heard people literally get corrected in meetings. Yeah, that that have said that and say like, no, it's Mario. Um, I want to. We are appearing on another channel soon about this very topic. Uh, the channel is the Bread. I'm getting the, the name of this right. Bread, bread, the bread pirate. The bread pirate. Oh boy, the bread pirate. Who reached out to us to ask about the pronunciation of Bokoblin. That which was an enlightening conversation. I guess among the Zelda community is a somewhat controversial topic. How? Uh, we have the answer. We answer that and a few other pronunciation questions, um, which all seem very logical to us. Yeah. And are the true ways. Don't don't question don't this. Don't question it. This that is, is the actual Nintendo fact. ways. But yeah. uh, if you're curious about that, we'll we'll let you know when that goes live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any others that you were getting wrong? Um, we moat. That's not a wrong well, that's pronunciation. Not, that's something completely that, different. Don't say that. That's fan, fans made that word up. Yeah. Um, I got wrist slapped on that once. Oh. Um, but I just started the company, so I didn't know. What else? Um, no, I, I'm good. Like, I'm good at this. I can pronounce a thing or two. Okay. Can't spell to save my life. Well, but I, I was can just going to say, I'm surprised based on your it. spelling. <laughs> Tyler Geis! Phonetically? That's the next question. <laughs> Hi guys, there used to be a recurring segment on Conan called Clueless Gamer, where Conan and Brian would attempt to play and often ridicule new and upcoming games. This included Mario Kart 8, and they even got early access to Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. I'm curious to know how Nintendo agreed to this, since it seems like they wouldn't want to hand over their product to someone who would present the game in a comical or negative connotation. Was this just another attempt to reach audiences during the Wii U era? Thanks. Well, I was there for this Wii U one. Yeah. Who did the Mario Kart 8 one? Was that one of us? I think it was me. I don't remember that one. Yeah, I, didn't, I think one of us did the uh, Smash Brothers one. You did the Smash one. Tyler, I was just as surprised as you were. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about this more in depth in a future story time, but that yeah. was a request that came through in like, I like guess like a week before E3. It was really crazy. And yeah. I was like, well, it's a pretty big outlet so i need i need to put it through the process and we can't of course I, got approved. I can't just veto this but 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 they'll absolutely say no and we sent it through to japan went to mr sakura he's like yeah let's do it I was like, oh my god i can't <laughs> deal with this the now worst so i had to ever. go to la like yeah. days before e3 to do this nonsense with conan o'brien yeah, yeah clueless gamer played People, smash brothers the, the, the key takeaway here is that anybody loves a, a good old broadcast to opportunity watch him Google Zero Suit Samus like oh, he's he writing did. a French tweet or something. He, did. he was he was <sighs> like, gonna draw he was gonna draw her like one of his French girls. I need to he get out of here. Like, <laughs> but you that, can't. Yeah. We'll All talk right. about that more in the future. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, that was an interesting day. Last question is from Ven. In your E3 poll on Patreon, one of the options is E3 is still viable if they make some key changes. If you believe this, what changes do you think needs to be made? Also, do you think Jeff Keighley did what was needed to make these events meet today's standards for gaming events rather than how they were in years past as seen here? And um, Jeff has a tweet that... Jeff's always got the tweets ready. Drafts. He's kind of talking about you know how much E3 meant to him and how he's kind of got this new vision for these events going forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So first question. What could be done to make E3 viable? I think the idea that you can only get sort of that experience if you're there physically present um, at the show is a dated concept now. Like now that there has been such a, um, you know, such, such an appetite from people and also just like expectation of people um, to get these, get the same information like digitally, whether it's through a Nintendo Direct or an Xbox Showcase or whatever, um, like having it be like only if you're there can you experience the magic of these games and experience E3 is like totally not viable and also very expensive for companies when they realize they can have the same impact digitally. Um, I think that's the first like big change that needs to needs to be made. Like if there is some sort of you know time frame that everyone is expected to do a thing, like they need to put the digital like first and foremost versus the physical. One of the things that I felt things started to fall apart when they were was when they started to focus on let's bring consumers into E3. Yeah. Because that didn't work well 
And Split the focus. I think it became a really hard thing for them to nail of making this show for consumers and for people in the industry. I, I don't I don't I don't think this would be like a silver bullet, but if they went back and said this is now strictly for the industry only, there would be some niche that it would be filling. Mm -hmm. Because I mean consumer events like we got plenty of those. Yeah. We got PAXs, we got Comic Con. Comic Con, we got Anime yeah. Expo, we got everything. Yeah. WonderCon, we got all this stuff. But there is still no, I mean, there's GDC, which has kind of a different sort of purpose. Mm -hmm. There's DICE, which is very small. CES, is that still a thing? Well, that's like all of electronics. But it was like, this is strictly for the gaming industry to come and like conduct business. Mm -hmm. uh, and press could still come. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that would solve every problem, but it might be a step in the right direction of, again, mm -hmm. just refocusing. On you know what E three did well, what is the purpose? What are people going to get something out of this, and and what is a need that need that is not being met? Yeah, I don't know. Jeff Keeley now. Jeff Keeley, he might know. <laughs> so we went to the Summer Game Fest event last year. Yeah, which was a lot of fun. Very cool. Hopefully, we get invited again. Hint, hint. <laughs> that was not. E3. That was an apples and oranges situation. That was a very that was a comparatively quite smaller event. Smaller than E3. Very focused. Um, it was a good event, uh, but it definitely doesn't have like I think E3 has been sort of known for very specific things. It's the place where everyone goes one time a year, one week a year to get all of your announcements, and you make all your announcements and you share all of your big news for the rest of the year with everybody. Like that, that was not sort of the focus of Summer Game Fest. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really interested to see on the event side. So I think we know that his stream, the Summer Game Fest stream, yeah. is just like, you know, the big Jeff Keighley announcement blowout. Right. And that's great. I mean, people love that. He'll definitely get people to sign up to do that with him. Right, right. But the event, like, I do have, I, I do imagine he'll try to go bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now Try knowing, to get more partners. Yeah, knowing now that um, you know there is no E three, that that gives him a good reason to go forward with that. Um, you know, not not every company was at that summer game fest. The booths mm -hmm. were quite. I mean, the booths were like the size of this room that we film in, not very big. Yeah, yeah. So but there were some notable companies there. Too. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of opportunity to to grow that. Yeah. More, but but not go like the crazy bloat direction of E three. Yeah. So. The thing that was really magical, and Nintendo did this really well at E three, is like. You could make an announcement as a company and say to people that could make a difference for you, like media and creators, like, and now you get to play this game right now. And I always thought that was like a very good formula because you got the opportunity to like share your news with a really big audience and then you would get all of these sort of trickle down, you know, people and, and press talking about like, what, what, what it was actually like to like play this game, to have this first-hand experience. That's kind of like the connection that I think needs to be made maybe more so at Summer Game Fest or, or more so if we're talking about like what is that other alternative to E3. That's pretty hard to do, so I, I don't know what the solution well, is. but Well, that is something that Jeff has been talking about trying to solve for. Mm -hmm. And I don't know you know, where he is this year with it, but like, yeah, like how do you translate the physical experience to what the person at home yeah. has? There's like all this chatter about like doing some sort of like, and then immediately afterwards a demo will be available. Right. And that, I mean, that's, like, we were at Nintendo during E3, we had the quote, home audience committee, which is like, how- I was on that committee. How do you do this? <laughs> and eventually we learned everything is actually the home audience committee. Exactly. So, so, we, so then we, we got rid of that the committee. <laughs> so- it's a hard question because, yeah, this event physically is, is only going to impact so many people. Like, watching a stream of announcements is cool. But yeah. Like, what is the next step with that? To exactly. Get, to get people hyped and, and get people And what does that look excited? like in 2023? Yeah. You know? So that's, like, a, a, a challenge that needs yeah. to be solved. But I think he's up for it. I think, you know, we may not see it immediately, but I think, you know, he'll, he'll keep plugging at it and he'll, he'll come up with something cool. I think he I will. I trust him. I, I do, too. Yeah. All right. That's the news. That well, that's the questions, not the news. Sorry. Yes, that's the news and the questions. <laughs> it's everything, actually. Recapping several segments. We're, Here we go. We're, we're, we're actually at <laughs> and the, the games we're playing and the, and the sponsors and the story and, time. and 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 the <laughs> and 
the Never Minute segment, and that's <laughs> that's pretty much it, except for our wonderful superstar shoutouts, which we're gonna start right yeah, now. Here we go. Aaron Hash. Ben Eichhorn. Maru Mayhem. Eigenverse. Kiss My Flapjack. Mike Chin. Mr. Rogers. Roy Eschke. Switching it up underscore. Safazon. The Shark Among Men. VGM Life. Link, the hero of wins. Angela Bycroft, your pig Molly. Turbocharge Nerd. Thomas O'Rourke. Kyle LaBeouf. And Twin Dragons 76. Woohoo! Now, before we start the One Up Club graduation service, we would just like to update that mm. Fox deploys dog Bernard. Bernard. Totally fine. We saw yeah. a picture of Bernard. Everything is okay. You really freaked out. I'm really freaked out. I wasn't worried at all. Bernard was, was, I, I, it was nice that Fox Deploy sent me multiple messages about Bernard to every platform. <laughs> well, I, was I like, think, oh, excellent. I think there was some, the, the concern was sensed and acted upon. <laughs> Bernard. I love you, Bernard. Okay, here we go. Yes. One Up Club graduation ceremony. A. Ron Burgundy. Adam and Ansley. Ajan Malari. Ale Alejandro. Alexandra Pratt. Andrew Yuhas. Astro Dev. Blazed and Enthused. Bookum Dano. Brad SF56. Brooke Obscura. Brookie Kazooie. Bruce Dash. Chancellor Fairley. Shelly underscore Squirrel. Christopher Lay. Cozy Tar. Captain Alex. C Roper 17. Daniel Cole. Daniel Phillips. Daniel Valencia. Dachshund. Desert Colt 18. Doo Doo Face. Dolce. Dino Punch. Shelly Peach. Esparts 50. Fart Priest 69. Furbound. Fernie and Jess Forever. Fox Deploy. Fred Rossi. Garrett Holfish. Garth the Wolf. Gartooth. G Sun 101. Yin Shi. Israel Izzy. J Rando. Jabroni Jones. JK99. JBJ. Jeffrey Hernandez. Jerry 92602. Jesse Hernandez. John Responte. Jonathan Rowe. Jordan Collette. Jordan Hemerly. Joseph DeHayes. Joshua, Joshua Clements. Juji Fruit. Just Cantro. Justin Leminger. Kawa 2796. Kelp Shake. Kevin Delane. Krisu. Chris. Krista Roddy Kid. Christopia Party With Me. Kyle Gamer Barry Rookie. Kyle Kretzer. Tyler Nelson. Linnell Stickman. Lemma. Lil Sebastian. Lit. Mad Dog 5981. Marky Man 64. Mecha Dragon 101. Megan. Michael Craven. Michael White. Mickey Conway. M oh, Mikey. Motomania. Mr. Andy Palm. MSM Poke Gamer. Mr. Beans and Dip. Mytran. Nasir. Nathan Burkhart. Panda Buns. Paul C. Pace. Paul Gill Network. Prime Factor. Prince Charmless. Reaver. Raintech. Ray Charon. Ryuji Utsuho Okuu. Renee Rivers. Ryoth One. RJ Kern. Rob Osborne. Renana Rex. Rox. Rianetta. Sam Newland. Sharif Jackson. Shinryu. Slowbro. Schmiggles. Shrews. Silly Ferret. SJ Sharky 777. Spicy Munchkin. Steel Citron. Tales of Link. Tefu. Terra Storm. Thomas Alvarez. Tover Schmofer. Travis Torline. True Bitch. Tugs Puppy Bear. Tuskoop. Tyler Geis. Vest Vest. Video Game Stupid. Virtual Bot. Wicked Davey. Will Ernst. Will Johnson. Zutiver. Zelgroth. Zoroid. Oh. Happy birthday to uh, True Bitch. Yes. Birthday. We celebrate, Happy we love to celebrate birthday. birthdays in the Kit and Krista oh, Discord. Oh, it's fun. Yeah. Birthdays are a big deal. Now, you had this whole rant of like, I am perfect at pronouncing things. I just had to laugh as we read through the, I was like, how many of these names have you ma I didn't mangled? pronounce any of these names wrong. Mangled. Mangled. Okay, come on. <laughs> I'm great at that. Ryu. Bogoblin. Lizalfos. <laughs> That's the name. It's not Lizalfoss, all right? It's not Lizalfoss. What? In what universe? This is. Lizalfoss. Who is pronouncing Lizalfoss and who's yeah. rating them? Who are the critics? These are, again, we got, I'm going to do some I, audience segmentation. I work for the law firm of Bokoblin Bo and Lizalfoss. <laughs> <laughs> LLC. <laughs> <laughs> ESQ. <laughs> uh, <laughs> They're going to defend me when I get put in a slammer for oh, showing the Mario back the, movie. Back to the, the bail bonds, yes. At the high school gymnasium. We're full circle now oh, on your boy. oil rig. We need to go, yeah, man. We do. We got to go. But don't forget to subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Kit and Krista so you can hear these great behind the scenes stories and all of our insights from being Nintendo for over 30 years. And I, the number keeps going up. I don't even know which is the right number anymore, but I think that's the right number. Um, if you're watching on video, you can subscribe to this channel. Give this episode a thumbs up. Leave us a comment. If you're so inclined, leave us a super thanks. Get us back to Japan. If you are listening on audio, you can also subscribe. 
uh, leave us a five-star rating and also a written review. Thank you very much. Yes, and please follow us on the socials. We are on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, of course, and Facebook. While they're still around. Who knows? Tomorrow we might wake up. And Here today, gone tomorrow. Tomorrow we might make, wake Oof. up and it might be three-minute increments of a two-hour podcast on TikTok. So <laughs> we live in a, a beautiful world of changes. All right. Goodbye. Bye-bye.